This is Jocko Podcast number 212 with me, Jocko Willink. The path of jujitsu is hard. It is a hard path. You have ups and downs. And there are times when you've got to work. And there are times when you get injured. And there are times when you get mentally defeated. And you feel like you don't want to do it anymore. And those days go on and on and on. But if you do the right thing, and you stay on the path over time, you will move forward on that path. You will move forward on that path if you keep your nose to the grindstone. You move forward on that path if you have the humility to say, you know what? I still have more to learn. And that's the same way it works with life. You're going to have ups and downs in life. Things are going to go wrong. You're going to lose businesses. You're going to lose jobs. You're going to break up. Things are going to go wrong. And what you need to do is to keep moving forward. No matter what happens, keep moving forward. And jujitsu is representative of life. If you stay humble and you stay on that path, you will end up achieving your goal. That will happen. And it did happen. It happened to my friend here, Echo Charles. And those are the words that I said in August when he received the black belt. The black belt. He always referred to the black belt as if there's only one in the world. The black belt. He received the black belt in jujitsu. And it was not an easy path. And there was much learned along the way, not just about jujitsu, but about life. And so I told Echo at that time, at some point, we would discuss that journey on the podcast. So, here we are. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. (laughs) So, uh, we did, I did immediately say, well, probably not immediately, but a few hours after you got your black belt, and there was a lot, we were a lot of people talking, you know, we were at Origin Camp, Mm -hmm. we were all talking about everyone getting their black belts, you get your black belt, what it's like to get your black belt, Mm -hmm. all the things that you had been through, and I said, you know what? We just gotta, just we'll, we'll do. We need to do a podcast about this because mm-hmm. it's a journey. Yes. And you know what's interesting too? <clears throat> I was thinking about this. Our last guest, Joel Struthers, when he came in and before we started recording, he was he was very humbled to be here. You know, he's like, man, he's like, yeah, I kind of feel, I, I, you know, you, here we are. We're having these guys that were from SOG, that were in Vietnam, Medal of Honor recipients. I mean, just really just esteemed guests on the podcast. And Joel's kind of like, you know, he's a humble guy. Mm-hmm. And it, what I what I realized is I, I said, well, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm still going to learn from you. You know, looking at Joel, I mean, he did some really cool stuff, had a good six years in the French Foreign Legion, learned some cool lessons. I want to learn those lessons too. Mm-hmm. So when I talk to you, like I want to learn what you learned. Mm-hmm. I want to learn from you. And that's part of what makes makes me keep, try and get better. That's what makes me get better is I'm, I'm going to learn from everyone. You know, you, you, know you, hear, you hear someone say, you even learn something from a white belt. Yeah. You know, that's like a saying. Mm-hmm. It's actually true. Mm-hmm. You, hear, you hear a seal say it. Oh, you can still start to learn something from a new guy. It's not just a saying, it's true. So with that, also some people have asked, you know, over the years, like how did you and I meet? So I think that's probably a a good place to start because we did meet from jujitsu. So how do we meet? Go. Well, we met in jujitsu. Actually, I remember it probably earlier than you do. But, you know, but when you say like how you can learn something from, from anyone, right? 
like oh this i think i mean you learning something from me or whatever and i'll see it in your face every once in a while when i when i'll say something it's almost like you're kind of computing and calculating like my interpretation of a certain like event or mm-hmm. incident versus your interpretation of it so it's kind of like oh it's almost like something's clicking in your eye like think okay so that's what you saw totally. during this you know totally. like so you can almost kind of kind of formulate how you come off a little bit more accurately you know like yeah, how yeah. you impress on, on to like the world or absolutely something. getting feedback from someone on how they interpret what you're saying is absolutely yeah, important because you could be like oh yeah like i'm i said that so well you know, like I was so clear. I was so like it even sounded dope the way I said it. You know, and then they're like, "Yeah, you, you know, you sounded kind of arrogant when you said that." And you're like, "Dang, you know, like yeah. it's more accurate." Little miss, know? yeah. Had a little one that was off. <laughs> Dude, you know, whatever. Overshot yeah. the target. Undershot the target. If you don't communicate with the target, you don't know. Yes. Yeah. So all right. So anyway, yeah. So we met. Um, I. When I first met you was I was a white belt at the boxing club. Hmm. It was like I remember this zero. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't no. remember meeting you at all. I'm zero. I'm literally thinking of like the look in your eye, thinking like you will not remember this yeah. at all. But I knew of you. I seen you before over at over at uh, remember kid. So Dean Lister opened a little spot. It was half of a martial of a karate gym. Mm-hmm. So he kind of I don't know if you that was an East it. Lake. Yes. Yeah. And he had half of it. He put this big curtain yeah. that separated that the like the days. karate class and our class. So I was I went down there. That's where I joined, and I saw you there. And I had heard about you from like Dean and some interviews that he did or whatever. And then um then that's when I seen you. But I didn't talk to you or nothing like mm-hmm. that. And it was a, it was literally like a weekend or something. Mm-hmm. And then you know how we would go there to the boxing club, which is a different gym. It's more of a gym, a boxing yep. gym with jujitsu and MMA. So we'd go from there to the boxing club there and boxing, you know, we'd kind of be training at both. Yeah. You were, I, I only trained at the place in East Lake, like a f- probably 10 times because it was a far away, Yeah, you know, by far away. I mean like 35 minutes or right. something like that, yeah. which is pretty far. When well, yeah. When compared to, yeah. The boxing club was pretty close. Yeah. Victory is the closest. Yes, sir. That was a good strategic <laughs> move there. Um, but nonetheless, uh, when I first rolled with you was at the boxing club when we were done with the the, the south the Chula Vista place, mm. or East Lake place. Um, and then yeah, so I rolled with you, and you 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 know I'm a white belt at this yeah. time, and yeah, you can you know beat me up whatever. Yeah. And then I remember you did this move that you still tr- you'll still try to do this move to me. Interesting. It I don't remember it working. Anytime recently, but okay. it's a, where yeah, you kind of pin me down. This afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> you, you pin me down inside mount side control, and uh, then you basically do a forearm across the neck okay, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of scenario. Yeah. And if your head is facing a certain way, it's really hard to get out yes, of. Yes, you're right. So you did that to me, I think, what, maybe two times or something. It's a real surprise move because no one thinks that they can get choked there. But yeah. you actually can get choked there. You can tap out. I tap out people with that move, yes. Yeah, and me as a white belt, I didn't know. Or I didn't have that preconceived notion that you can't get tapped out. I didn't even have that. I was <laughs> brand new. And so you did it. And I was like, oh, cool. Uh, and now in that, at that point, I was like, I was one of the, these guys who an, asked a lot of questions, mm-hmm. like a lot of questions. Like anything I, I saw for the first time, I'm like, hey, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? So I asked you, but <laughs> you got that way. you're still kind of like this where like when you meet someone like you don't. You don't, uh, how should I say, exchange pleasantries that much. Yeah, that's true. I, I, you know, actually, I'm more conscious of it now when I meet people. Like, let's say, if I meet someone that's sort of like listens to the podcast, obviously, like I'm cool to them because there's some kind of connection there. Yeah, yeah. But for sure, never in my life have I been a person where I meet someone and I'm, you know, having some big open conversation with them. That's yeah. not really. It's weird because because. You know, kind of what I do for a living now is basically talk, mm-hmm. and and I not a big talker. Mm-hmm. Um, in if I don't know people, yeah. If I don't yeah. know people, if uh, I go to a party, like I would go to like let's say some kind of a whatever party with yeah. my wife and just not talk to anybody. Right. Not not no. Look, I'm not like standing a quarter uh, brooding at people yeah, being yeah. a jerk, but. I'm not gonna make a big connection with a lot of people, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, if someone's got cauliflower ear <laughs> or something, <laughs> you might open up a little discord. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah, fully. Like you're not the guy who's you know in the corner telling all the stories, not and looking the to make friends, or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, fully. And and 
back then you were you were like that as well. So even like even like when you make small talk nowadays, mm-hmm. if you if you kind of see someone and you're like, hey, you're whatever. Even your small talk is like, and I'm comparing this to knowing you now mm-hmm. for however long. You can t- there's a huge disconnect, like a huge, and I don't mean it in a bad way. It's just more like you're. You're doing it kind of in this almost like in an official way, mm. you know, where it's like you're not open kind of thing. And, and maybe me say, even talking about it makes it seem like a bigger deal than it is. But mm-hmm. it's there big time. So back then, oh, it was there huge time. So you're like <laughs> over there. You're like, yeah, like this is blank look. <laughs> kind of like, yeah, man, like good, you know, whatever, strong, whatever. You know, giving, doing the, saying the correct stuff, that's yeah. cool. But like. Like a, like a shark with black eyes. Yeah. There's no thought there. <laughs> black. Just black. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's and funny because that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what I heard too. So that was like, and, and I um, I kind of just had met Sarge, you know, at that point. Mm-hmm. And he was sort of the same way, but it was you're you're kind of different level in that regard and so i was like hey how do you how, oh what would you do there whatever and you were like well it's like it's just what you saw you know side mount boom put your arm right there and just choke you and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> there was no big revelation i was like all right so i'm like cool bro like this all right, I, and I didn't cut it, I didn't get the impression that you like disliked me or nothing, mm-hmm. which I probably would have if you were anybody else. But I knew that you were sort of like that, so I was like whatever. <laughs> Jock was like apparently, you know, right. what I thought he was, and and that was sort of it. And and I didn't like train with you or nothing like that. I, I, not that I remember mm-hmm. anyway. And then um, so this, this that was probably like two thousand five, two thousand six. Check. And then um, yeah, I don't know if you were gone. You know, overseas or whatever. I guess you were, right? Yeah. Well, I went overseas probably after I met you because I deployed yeah. in the summer of two thousand and six. So I left in like April for Ramadi. Yeah. And yeah, then when and then did I you come the, back? And then when I came did, back and start training and stuff October, like that again. October or oh. November of two thousand six. Six. Yeah. So the when I remember the first like early memory of actually like seeing you again after that was. Um, like well after purple belt, so I got purple belt in 2007, and I was like competing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you were there, and I was yeah, like yeah. kind of training with you or whatever. Not not that much, but yeah, I was compete. I remember you being at the competition. Yeah, yeah, I remember coaching you sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then well, when you were co- when you were actually coaching me, like on the um, like right before I got injured and stuff, like mm-hmm. we were training a lot. I was yeah. training with you oh, a lot. Okay. And then. Um, it was funny because you're like the same way, and with it, this actually helped me. At first, I was like, "Fuck, Jocko doesn't care about me that much," you know. <laughs> but <laughs> this is what I realized, like pretty quick, is like it's not that you don't care about me. It's like you, certain things are not a big deal, which we all think are a big deal. Like to you, <laughs> they're just not a big deal. <laughs> so like that that time when I uh, it was the same tournament as I hurt my arm the first uh-huh. time. And I got go go plotted. Remember? Uh-huh. And here's the thing: when I was like, when I was competing before that, like I never ever since I went because okay, so no gi, it's not by belt. Mm-hmm. Back then, it was not by belt. Yeah. It was like uh, if it was a big tournament, it was, it was like novice, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Mm-hmm. That's how it went. And then if it's a smaller tournament, there's just beginner, intermediate, advanced. So the when I started competing in advanced. Like, that's when I was sort of training with you. Mm -hmm. And at that point, like, I was doing really good. I was training, like, a lot, a lot, and I never never lost. Never lost. Up until that that day, right, Mm -hmm. that I hurt myself. So, like, a few matches before I hurt myself, I went against it. And it's Sean Roberts, by the way. So, you know who Sean Roberts is, right? He's, like, he ended up being a famous jiu-jitsu guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sean Roberts. That's Sean Roberts. Got it. So, he, uh, I go against him, and he go, go, he finishes me with mm-hmm. a go-go plot mm-hmm. right my, my wife's yeah. there yeah. you know my family's there yeah. everything you know they kind of expected me to win yeah. you know because it's champion been echo <laughs> champion of the family <laughs> oh, yeah. just got and they can't tell what that was yeah a go-go plata too is like a i'm not gonna say it's a it's a move of humiliation to have done to you but there is a level of it's a highlight on, on real the, move on the humiliation scale it's not in the middle <laughs> it's no, leaning it's towards leaning. humiliating yeah, yeah, towards because there's a lot of things that have to happen and yeah. it 
Yeah. Wait, well, yeah. you said a go-go plotter, right? Go-go plotter. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I would say this to evaluate a go-go plotter if it's done to you. You are the the the, the butt end of a highlight reel. Yes, you are. Like pretty much under all circumstances, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so and meanwhile, Sean Roberts is a thinner, like more thin guy. Yeah. So when we when we face off, it's like, mm, oh, on. this guy's gonna get smashed. And Sean, oh man, yeah, and he totally got me with it. Like probably textbook. Like it would. There was at no point in that match that I was like getting him or nothing. Yeah. He he ran through me and, and tapped me out, right? And then so I'm like devastated. Never lost an advanced competition. I'm like devastated. My you know, my family's there or whatever. My wife's like, <laughs> well, we weren't married at the time, but she's like, oh like, oh man, are you like okay? Like worried about how I'd handle it. But so I'm like, whatever. <laughs> like I wasn't that like broken up about it, but it was something. It was mm-hmm. like a little shock. And then <laughs> you're like across the arena, or whatever, later, and you text me, he goes, Ooh, you got caught with the go go. That's gotta sting. I was like, Bro, <laughs> <laughs> my coach, my coach telling me this, you know, not like, Hey, hey, shake it off, you know, like get back in there. Nothing like that. <laughs> like, dude, it's gotta sting. <laughs> but strangely, it, that made me feel so much better when you did it, like when you said that, you know, because I was like, man, it's it's not a big deal, man. This is not a bit, you know, like we're in this arena, you know, it's like we're in a jiu-jitsu, everyone's competing and it's like, you know, it's so not a big deal at the end of the day, but it feels like a huge deal, you know. So when, when I got that yeah. text, I was like, and meanwhile, I see you across the thing, like on your phone or whatever, I was like, oh, this guy, <laughs> but I'm like, whatever. So, um. Yeah, that was kind of like how the whole deal was. I ended up getting hurt my my first bicep tear yeah. or whatever and so I was out for a little bit, but yeah, when I came back we trained some more too. But uh we, before you tore your bicep because there was a time period where we were training hard yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. That was this time period, right? Yes. Yeah. Like I always need a alternate training partner for Dean cuz Dean's yeah. traveling or Dean's hurt or whatever and so mm-hmm. I always have someone else yeah. and some up and comer that's hungry that doesn't mind training hard and wants to train a lot. Yeah. So, you know, you and then Andy after yeah. Andy's who it is right now. Yeah, Andy was way after though. Oh yeah, yeah, Andy's way so, after, but I'm just saying like at that time you were training with me. Like I remember we were tra- we'd go to other mats, we would train, yeah. you know, other mats in oh, our yeah. gym, be like, "Oh, they're they're over there. Let's get there's more room. We'll go yeah. over here." Yeah, I remember actually when Victory first, it was called Throwdown Elite. Mm-hmm. And we went, um, we, you, it wasn't even done yet. And yeah, oh yeah. everyone was training and we were like, hey, let's go downstairs. Like no one had ever touched these mats yeah, before. Yeah. And that was, and we rolled or whatever and the mats were still like weird slippery because yeah, they yeah. still had the little, you know. Layer of yeah, the, whatever, like, the factory new, juice yeah. on them or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, whatever. And it, But I remember that's when you were like, was like, you know what a good feel I forget your exact words but it was something like this you know what a, what feeling re- is really really good to have your own gym to train at <laughs> whenever you want I was like oh yeah I remember that specifically but yes yeah that that was um yeah that was when I was competing and yeah training yeah. as much as possible so uh then you hurt your arm whatever and then what at what point did you start cuz at this point you were a bouncer whatever um, at what point did you start making videos? Because it was pretty early on yeah. that you decided that you were going to become a videographer, video maker, maker, yeah, yeah. something. Uh, yeah. So we, I stopped being a bouncer and I started getting to web with my brother from scratch. I didn't right. know anything. So it's you know it's kind of like multimedia, you know, mm-hmm. web development, graphic design, that kind of stuff. I always was sort of into that in one way or another growing up mm-hmm. since a little kid where me and Jade, my brother, were kind of standouts in that regard, like mm-hmm. drawing. And in fact, I remember one time Jade, he was in we, in sixth grade. We did, you know how they used to have poster contests? Yeah. I'm sure they still have it in some. Yeah, I'm sure they but do. But you basically, they give you a theme and then you, col- you draw and color a big poster. Mm-hmm. That does that's you know that follows that theme and Jade ended up winning it a national like it, go, it goes by love so you win and poster. then it's like yeah apparently it was about drunk uh, drunk driving mm-hmm. mad mothers against drunk driving yep. so you know you win what the was school his poster? it was actually kind of dope it was a uh, a car for the time this yeah. is like you know sick literally sixth grade a car crashing into a big can of beer that was it. Cool. But the way he did it was good. And he's, you know, we were real good at drawing too at that mm-hmm. time. So he wins the school. He wins the island of Kauai, that, and then it wins like the state, 
you know, then all the winners of the state go to the national, which one, and he freaking wins it, $1,000. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> That's a lot of money. Oh, yeah, a trip to, like, New York and, like, all this stuff. So it was kind of a big deal just for drawing. So anyway, the point is, like, we, 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 we were always into artistic and drawing stuff. So web design and, mm. and graphic design was kind of like, okay, that was good. And then kind of through that, um, I don't know. So you know the idea – you watch a movie, right? Or a movie's going to come out, mm-hmm. and you watch the trailer, yeah. and you're like, dang, the tra- look, I can't wait to watch that movie. Then you watch the movie, and you're like, okay, cool, good movie, but, man, the trailer was, like, way better. Mm-hmm. You know, got me way more fired up than, the, like, the movie. The movie kind of was a letdown. Kind of. So that whole idea, that whole phenomenon, like, I really was interested in where, like, who made that trailer where he got the movie and chopped it up and got the cool parts and told almost like a little alternate story, you mm-hmm. know? like And not necessarily alternate, but just— Do you remember just, what— was there a specific trailer that oh, kind yeah. of, what was it? A bunch of them. So one of the ones that I always watch was Terminator Salvation. And it has the, I think. Oh. Whenever you say a movie and then you give me this look of you're waiting for me to give you the <laughs> nod of like, oh, yeah. yeah. I know that. And one, I'm yeah. just giving you a straight blank okay. stare because I've seen Terminator 1 and 2. Yeah. And I, I don't know what comes after that, but apparently Salvation is no, one no, of them. Yeah, yeah, one of them. So Terminator 1, which... Okay, so Terminator 1, Terminator 2 are, are the best by far. Mm. Like f- all, pretty much factually the best one. <laughs> pretty much. Like it's not, okay. very, it's not very much up for debate. But that's back in the day before trailers really kind of hit their stride as far as movie trailers go. So and there's Terminator 3, which is a complete, complete flop, by the way. Side note. So anyway, Terminator 4, Terminator Salvation, Christian Bale was in that one. Anyway, the trailer was like really well done in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And it had, I forget the group, I'm just drawing a blank, but I think it might have been like Nine Inch Nails or something like that, okay. where they did, they had the song called The Day the Whole World Went Away. Mm-hmm. It was the day the whole world went You don't went need to sing it for us, but away. we'll take your word for it. Anyway, they <laughs> used that song in the trailer. And then the, the way they did it, I was like, man, this, I, this is like, I want to live my life like this trailer feels or whatever, as far as like, you know, the videos I want to make. So there was that. There was like Clash of the Titans. That was a good one, I thought. Um, dude, yeah, there's a bunch. Okay, so then you decided you're going to start making trailers. What Kinda, was the first video way, that you got paid to make? That I got paid to make? Yes. Was with you, bro. <laughs> and what was it? Is the so, first, uh, was it Throwdown or was we Victory? Nope, not even that. It was before that. What was it? So the first video I made ever was like on a cruise. Like, you know, like now you can see them anywhere. Like you, you know, you basically take your camera, you do the cruise, you chop it up, put it with music. But the first m- video that I made for money was with you for like some oh, teacher's oh, association. Was that thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I so, made like a thing about the laws of combat. You filmed me, I sat there and talked about yeah, it. You know. And then they institute it inside their organization yeah. for 18 months or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. That's the one that the sound was off. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the the reason that's funny, obviously, to use it. <laughs> so act, so just to let me fill in the listeners, please. This is like a probably a one hour video, maybe maybe I don't know, forty five minute video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a forty five minute video. I'm talking. I'm explaining the laws of combat. I'm talking about extreme ownership. I'm going through these things to this screen, and the the audio is off by a half a second. So it looks like a weird old Chinese martial arts film with a voice dub over. And so I say to Echo, you know, I'm like, hey, it seems like, you know, it seems like my voice doesn't match my mouth. And I'm saying it sort of as a question, but like term the first two Terminators being the factually, this was a factual situation. There was no debating. I was watching my lips move with no words coming out. And I'm like, this is not good. And you you pushed back on me, actually. Yeah, That's I, what's I, really funny. Yeah. That's, that actually made me suspect of your whole existence. Yeah, your whole, because you were like, you were trying to explain to me that that was somehow, like you were, first of all, you tell me like, well, no, not really. I'm like, <laughs> watch the, the lips move, see how there's no words coming out? Wait, was that the time that, where you came over and we were watching it? Or were you texting me? I think I, you st- came I started off texting you like, hey, yeah. can you sync these things? And your responses were like, well, it's not it's not really that off. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And so then I probably came to your house yep. with a pistol and was like, okay, we're going to fix this. Mm-hmm. But, but you had a serious, there was a problem. 
So this is this is this is what happened. How to, how did you think that was okay? Okay, this is this is okay. So there's there's three little elements to this whole equation that'll make it make sense. Okay. So okay. So first off, <laughs> it, I, t- I wasn't necessarily acting like this, and I'm not saying I was trying to give the impression that I knew exactly what I was doing. Because come on, let's face it, this is literally my first video <laughs> that I've ever made that anyone's actually depending on me, right? So. I'm like, all right. So, yeah, I sync up the audio or whatever. And I don't know how to sync up audio. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just winging it. So, I sync up the audio, what I thought was, like, synced up. Yeah. And so, I'm Give going through it. Give or take a half a second or <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm editing it and just like I said, but I'm used to the, the video, the one or two videos that I've ever made was, like, two minutes long. So editing a two minute video is like, okay, click, 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 you edit, you edit. But man, 45 minutes of editing your brain and just, a con- you know, like, so it can be off sync by a lot and your brain will, will kind of connect the dots. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Like you ever watch a movie? Uh, a- no, I get it. I get yeah, it. So my You're- brain essentially connected it and was interpreting it as sunk up. Good. <laughs> so you're over here saying, hey, it's off sync. Look at this. And I'm like, looking at, I'm looking at it. And then bro, I'm doing all these weird mental experiments, like to be like, okay, let me pause it right when he said, and it's all checking out in my brain. I, I get it. it was, and that's when I was like, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> so finally you were like, bro, I'm like, I'm coming over and we're going to f- get to the bottom of this. So I'm like, yeah, c- come, whatever. So you come and we're doing it. And you're like, me and you were just seeing two different things at this point. Cause my brain is all whacked, all jammed yeah. up. Cause I remember like we were, I was trying to meet, a, we were trying to meet a deadline too. That's the yeah. thing. So I was staying up like super late, not getting much sleep. So, so you come over, we're looking at it. We're seeing two different things until this one little part where you're like, you clap. Oh, I clap. You did yeah. this, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then it was like, oh, my gosh. So it's real clear when you clap and then the sound comes later. And you were like, yeah, look at that. And I'm like, it all like came crashing down. Like, man, I'm completely wrong. But that was good because I could be like, okay, now I'm going to sink the whole 45 minutes off of this one thing. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So that's that's what happened there. <laughs> okay. So that was your first video, near failure. But here's the thing about that first video, too. That was like the beginning of Echelon Front, essentially. Yeah, that was. Because when you think, okay, so I revisited that video like last year, just going through. What year what, was that? Do you happen to remember? Tw- yeah, 2010. Whew, yeah. Yeah, so Echelon Front wasn't officially formed yet. I think that was like right after you retired. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, I looked at it so a year ago. I look. I bring up the video looking over hard drives or whatever. I bring it up. I'm like, let me check this out. You're all young. So funny. It's like you're all young looking and you're so t- saying all Echelon Front stuff. But yeah. super like early beginnings of it. You yeah. see what I'm saying? I was like, oh, man, it's really interesting to watch now that like I know like all the content or whatever. It's, it's funny. But yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Echelon Front 1.0. Yes, that is it right yep. there. First one. And the second video was with you as well. That was the victory, the throwdown. Was it victory? Yeah, it was victory at that time. Yeah, it was victory. Yeah. yeah. You know, and victory. which video was it? The outtakes from some of those videos are awesome. Yeah, that was, that was later on. It was just like. There's one where there's, Dean Lister's like monkeys, giraffes, gorillas. Yeah, that was the outtake. <laughs> that, that cracks me yeah. up. But that, I think that, those, the victory ones, that's how like people started to know around like here and around San Diego that I did video because I did a series of them and that just kind of were like, I just tried to make them like kind of like movie trailer, Mm. kind of dramatic. And no one at that time was doing anything like that as far as like making videos for companies or whatever. And so it, you look at them now and they're like, they're pretty cheesy Mm -hmm. now. But back then it's kind of like, Oh dang, you know? Yeah, no, those were like, those were really good. Yeah. videos for that time period yeah and i i sort of put my name on them not sort of i straight up put my name on them you know when we i'd upload them or whatever and that's how people were like oh you're echo Charles. you're the one that does that, those videos like that you know i guess my name's kind of distinct or whatever so that's how i kind of kind of gained like some people some, started knowing some fame no, no, not fame, but people started knowing I made Rec- videos, name recognition you know? yeah as far as video okay goes. so now there's a chunk of time now we're talking because we didn't start this podcast until 2015. And these yeah. are easy dates for me to remember because Extreme Ownership came out in October of 2015, but I was on Tim Ferriss' podcast. That came out like September 25th, 2015. Okay. And then I was on Rogan like December 8th or something, mm-hmm. 2015. And then we started this. Two weeks later, this this podcast. I remember, 
I was like, let's get it out before Christmas. Yeah. And we did. We got it out like 22nd of 22nd. December or something like that. So there's five years between, okay, you made the first Echelon Front 1.0 video. Yep. Between that time period and 2015, what were you doing? Okay, so you were making other videos. Yeah. You had some. You actually had some pretty big, pr- pretty big videos, right? You did. Well, let's just start with the Hanat show, right? Hanat show, yeah. So the Hanat show. Yeah. So it well before like after the victory that was started this cascade of like other people wanting me to do yeah, videos. Those were good videos. So it, which was perfect because. I kind of got thrown into the mix, like, and had to like. You had to learn. Yeah, like hard, like There's fast. There's no better way to learn than getting thrown in. The, well, so. I mean, there are better ways, but <laughs> yeah, that, but that's a out. way. That's a way you're gonna have to learn. Yeah, you get a sink or swim, and you yeah. started swimming, crawl stroke, oh, back yeah. stroke, breast stroke, <laughs> side stroke. But yeah, and the, like the mistakes you make, like you really learn the lesson because it's not like, oh, I made the mistake in my freaking. What was your next room? big after the? What was the next like big break after oh. victory? Um, I. A big one, I worked for a guy, Blake Mallon, and that was like, as far as content goes, it was like, okay, it was kind of, you know, corporate and stuff like that um, compared to the stuff I do now. When but you would make early, which what is what I noticed, when you make er, when those early videos that I was in, when I watch them, I'm like, this is the same thing we're doing right now yeah. almost. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. the same, especially you see the, well, like you said, like the thing that I, the things I'm saying then, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we if we would have known then we just say okay let's just start making more yep. videos right now and really when you think about the whole thing as a big picture it's it, that's literally what happened so like when you like when we're making the victory videos right there's so many outtakes like and most of them are me and you because mm. you're messing with me the way you always mess with me like you're like <laughs> there's this one where you're like because okay and you you you're kind of smart you like you and i don't mean smart like smart. you're uh observant you're more observant than the normal person uh-huh. so <laughs> I'm new to video and I figured out really early when I do shoots with people, I just press record because a lot of the good stuff you can get with people is when they don't know you're recording, right? right? When I'm talking to them, directing them, um, they're doing something else. They say something, they're trying to at least loosen up and they're doing whatever. And there's a lot of good stuff come from there, right? And you picked up on that pretty quick and you're like, you're recording, aren't you? And I'm like, he's like, I saw you press the button. Oh, man. Like, it's, but the way you said it, it was like, bro, that's literally the same stuff you do now. You know what else is funny? You got that one video of our old CrossFit instructor. Yeah. And he's saying, he's saying, I'm going to try and summon my inner, inner Jocko, Jocko, which yeah. is weird because how did he, what, had he even seen me before? <laughs> where, yeah. where did that come from? <laughs> hey, man. Everybody knew, man. That's that was how. random. Yeah. That was random. But yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I did some some of that. Then, yeah, working with Blake because that was it's like an ongoing thing. Which right. that's what I really liked about like doing video or the the type of videos I like to do is like ongoing ones, stuff where I could like think of like cool little themes for the next one, you mm-hmm. know, kind of thing. So I did that for a while, and then um, and then I tried to, and then I wanted to make like movies and stuff. Like I think like anyone who does video, you um, did uh. You did some martial arts, some grappling stuff too. Those were some pretty good videos. And you were actually traveling to do those videos. Which ones? Like Metamorphs. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Some good, you did some really cool Metamorphs videos. They were kind yeah. of uh, pre-fight Right, yeah, videos, like, kind of like a countdown. Videos, yeah, countdown promo. type videos, 30 for 30 or whatever. Yeah, kind of like little mini documentaries yeah. like about the person in the fight coming up. Yeah, yeah. And that actually, doing those a lot, that's how I met a lot of the big jujitsu players. And how even more how that spread like through the jujitsu community outside of San Diego, like, okay, that guy makes like videos or whatever. So I did that. And at the same time, I met Rasan, who is Henato Laranja. Mm -hmm. I met him and I was like, bro, this guy needs like a show. So we we made a show with him. And we're doing episodes. uh, I think six, six altogether. Those are hilarious. Oh, yeah. Those are epic. Yeah. And those are on Flexpoint. TV? Well, oh, they're on YouTube, yeah. But like, where on YouTube? Uh, just just go ahead and the Laura and just show. Or yeah, flixpoint.tv, they're on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. Um, but we had, that one, that's a hard one to, that was hard to make, given where I was in my career, we'll say, because it's like, okay, I can do, if I was just doing that full time, which I kind of was at a little pocket, I was just doing that full time, you could do it. But cause consider what you got to do as just, you know, I don't have this huge production studio with people like arranging everything. So 
we got to basically arrange my schedule because I still got to work and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was, we were, me and Jade were putting money into it. We were spending money to produce this show. So there's that. And then there's, I, I've got to work, right? I, I have other stuff to do. So I got to schedule with myself. And we filmed in LA, which is two hours away. Um, Where'd you, what space did you use? It's called the Dream Factory LA. S- Some place that you were paying to use yeah, their space. Yeah, you rent out yeah, the studio. Totally, yeah, it's yeah. a it's little set there. It was pretty dope, though. It was, it was really cool. Um, and then, so my schedule, the Dream Factory schedule, which that one wasn't too bad because, you know, you can schedule it in advance or whatever. But Hinato's sh- schedule, and then the celebrity, because the guests are celebrity types. Bass Rutin, <sighs> Frank Shamrock, like Hannah, like all these. So you got to schedule with them as well. Like Kenny Florian was the first one. <laughs> it was, that was a really fun show, oh, but yeah. it was really hard to put, to get together and put on. Yeah. So when when I had a career, and then towards the end of us filming that, my career started to go up and up even more. So it's like, man, I I can't do it. I just couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. Um. So yeah. So it stopped. But that's a funny one. Yeah. I, all everyone's so all like watch him again, and it's freaking. It's funny. Yeah. No. He's he's a hilarious guy. It was a it's a good show. Great show. <laughs> and then uh. Meanwhile, you and I are still training hard. I mean, we're training hard this whole time. You were one of my primary training partners this entire time. Yeah. Um, and then, at, at like I just kind of told part of the story, but I go on Tim Ferriss's podcast, and he tells me to start a podcast. And I, you reminded me of this. We actually had talked about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Wait, were you trying to convince me to do yeah. one? Yep. Yeah. So you told me that we should do a podcast that you could figure it out or whatever. Yeah. And and then I was on Rogan, and that's why at the end of the first time I was on Rogan's show, I said, Echo, get it, you know, get ready. Because in the middle of Rogan's show, he says, hey, you should have a podcast, which come to find out, Joe Rogan tells everybody that. Yeah, <laughs> everyone who should have one. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, But I listened, mm. thankfully, and it was, you know, both hearing it from Tim and Joe was 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 uh, convincing, and I mean, I would have done it just off of Tim, but the book, it was like, I, I was on Tim, then the book came out, then mm-hmm. I was doing that thing, and just barely got done doing kind of the, the book promotions in New York City when I came home, and that's when Rogan, so it all happened pretty quick, but yeah, yeah having both those guys say it. So then, but I do remember this conversation for sure. I came back from Rogan, and I said, hey, we're going to do a podcast. Are you good? You know, can, can you make it? Can you make it? And you said, I'll tell you tomorrow. Cause I remember you specifically said, I'll tell you tomorrow. You could, you didn't have an answer for me right then. Yeah. The next day you come in a train, I come in a train and you, you said, Hey, I know I can do the podcast. I figured it all out. I know what I got to do. And then you said, let me be on it too. And I said, what are you going to do? And you said, I'll be normal and you be you. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and plus, more important, I didn't want to sit and talk to myself. I'd rather talk to, to you. Mm-hmm. And because you and I would talk on the mat anyways. And oftentimes we're talking about subjects that we would, that we're interested in. Yeah. So why not be able to sit there and talk to someone? And you're a super humble guy. I was like, yeah, I could. You know, we hang out all the time. So if there's one person that I can see that can sit there and listen and not feel like, hey, I got to throw my two cents in on every. It's like, okay, cool. Like, let's do this. So uh, that's how we ended up doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, yeah, the timeline a little bit. Okay. So you, and just from my perspective, Mm -hmm. I remember it very clearly too, by the way, Um, when you were on Tim Ferriss, like, okay, so most of us- Did you listen to me on Tim Ferriss? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, right when it came out, that was good. Even, and I knew you for a long time, but that was a really good one. That was a really good. That was a great podcast. Tim was, think about Tim. Tim, I I mean, you think about the caliber of people that Tim Ferriss has on his podcast, Mm -hmm. and it was my buddy Kirk Parsley who introduced me to Peter Atia with the purpose, like, Kirk was trying to trying to hook me up, mm. and and Peter, when I talked to Peter, who I'm now you know good friends with Peter too, but you know it was the same thing. Like they're trying to uh, dis, dis, decipher if I would be a person that would be interesting, right, to listen to. So so awesome, you know. Yeah, like I said, Kirk hooked me up with Peter. Peter 
called Tim and said you should have this guy on your podcast. And oh, yeah. that was the first first interview I ever did. No, oh, that's good. In my life. Yeah. Is sitting in Tim Ferriss's house in the San Francisco Bay Area, which he doesn't own anymore, uh, because he moved to Austin, Texas. But just that, like I went up there on a, I flew up there. That was a good call because he said we can do it over remote, and I said no, I'll come up. Yeah, you know, because I, I, I wanted I, I'm communicating over the phone, and there's yeah. gaps and there's pauses. You can't see the person. So thankfully, I went up there, and. You know, met with him. Actually, stayed the night. It was it was awesome, man. Tim's just was super cool. Uh, and then, so that podcast happened. So you listened to that one? Oh yeah, that's interesting that you sort of figured that that communication thing because that's a huge deal. Like if you can go, if you have the option to go in person or or over Skype, um, of course you can choose in person. That kind of seems obvious, but I feel like people don't understand how much of a difference that that makes. Like it's night and day. It's a night and day situation. <laughs> I was working for the Admiral in charge of all the SEALs. And there was a meeting happening in DC, like at the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And the Admiral had a small, a small decision was being made and he had an opinion on it and someone else had another opinion on it. And he talked to the guy that was making the decision. It was like, hey, you know, do you want me to come out here for this meeting? And the guy's like, well, you don't have to. And the admiral's like, okay, cool. Because it for the admiral and I, you know, that meant us getting on the, you know, on a flight, flying six hours. Not like we have a jet. Like we're gonna get on a commercial flight. We're gonna stay the yeah. night in some random hotel. Blah 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 blah. So he goes, okay, well, you understand my perspective, boss. Sounds good. If you don't need me out there, I won't come. So we did a, vi- it was a video teleconference, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting in there, and the decision goes the other way. Yeah. And the admiral goes, he as soon as we got off, he looked at me, and he said. I should have gone to that meeting. Yeah. And I was like, Roger that, boss. Yeah, that makes sense. You, you, face-to-face is a big deal. Yeah. Especially if there's no relationship established. Yeah. If you, if you don't have a relationship with someone, you need to go build it. You need to build it as much as you possibly can face-to-face. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, and there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of over obvious stuff, you know, be, you know, to, to figure that when you figure that it's like, okay, these, for these obvious reasons or whatever, but the not so obvious reasons are just the little teeny tiny, almost subconscious subtleties of being there with someone, Mm -hmm. even like split seconds in a conversation can like, can make a difference between like, if it, if it's like cohesive or feels cohesive for sure. And that's not, and that's of course from person to person, but from people listening as well. So like that, that's why like I think that was a good good move for you to just make that make that sacrifice and go up there yeah. and be there with them. Yeah, no, Skype. it was awesome. And Tim was pretty in the groove at that time. Like he yeah. he knew how to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he and also the format of his podcast was like you knew kind of what I kind of knew what he was going to ask about, and and yet you could veer off and talk about other subjects. So it was like a really nice way to kick things off. And now that I've done a bunch of television interviews, mm-hmm. podcasts are just infinitely more comfortable for me. Yeah. So some people, they don't want to get trapped in some long-term conversation and have to remember what they just said and yeah. pr- formulate thoughts fresh on the, on the spot, on the moment. Yeah. Whereas, because the TV, people that are doing TV interviews, they, they're not formulating thoughts at that moment. They go into that with a preconceived statement right. they got four sentences that they're gonna say mm. and that's what they're gonna say it doesn't really matter what they get asked so some people would prefer to do that some people would prefer to do a long I don't mind doing either but pff, it's infinitely more fun yeah and thought-provoking and intellectually stimulating to actually yeah, go yeah. have a legitimate conversation with and, and with with Tim which yeah. was which was awesome so that was a, a very cool way for me to kick things off oh, very yeah. lucky yeah. And and me, I was just like probably millions of people who like knew about Joe Rogan, listened to Joe Rogan's podcast, which that's kind of like the, the standard, you know, that that top standard of podcast. But here's the thing about it. It's like since it's so conversational 
where he's like just talking in the in the early days of Joe Rogan podcast he um he would just talk to like Red Band mm-hmm. and like his friends and they're yeah. just talking about stuff you know um now it's like there's a lot more to it for sure but um back then it was like oh these are just guys cruising down in their basement or some cool room that they're just basically what we all sort of do anyway and talk shit with e- with each other mm-hmm. with friends and so I think me, like millions of other people, were like, man, that'd be so cool to be able to do that, do a podcast like mm-hmm. that, you know, just talking yeah. with my friends or whatever. And then so being in jujitsu, I think that a lot of people are in this same boat where they know the guy who like when he's kind of talking, everyone sort of just listens and likes to chime in and whatever. Right. So like with us in jujitsu, it was like you and even Dean, when he talk about jujitsu or stories or whatever, like they, there's a lot of cool conversations that go on mm-hmm. on the mat afterward before jujitsu, whatever. And that those things would always go on. Those are the things were going on way before Tim Ferriss interview, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so before the whole podcast idea, uh, we already had. I think I was like a lot of people. We already had kind of, for lack of a better way of putting it like dreams of doing some cool podcasts. Like everyone had that thought, not that we were ever going to pursue it or nothing like that, but the thought like, wouldn't that be so cool if we could have a podcast like Joe Rogan does and have it be like a good, you know, successful one. A lot of people. And you get, even nowadays people email me all the time saying like, Oh yeah. Like I want to start my own podcast. I want to start my own podcast. Right. Cause it's like when you listen to two people talking, it's like, man, that's your job, man. That's the coolest thing in the world. So I already had that in my brain. So when you went on Tim Ferriss, I was like, man, when he was like, hey, you should do a podcast. I was like, hell yeah, you should do it. We should do a podcast. To me, that was like, we should do a podcast <laughs> when he said that. So that's actually, it was, I think, I'm pretty sure it was before Joe Rogan. I was like, hey, we should do a podcast. And you, you were like, yeah. You were like, we, like, why would you be on? Like, it doesn't, I said, you should have me on. And you were like, why? Like, what? And it wasn't like, it'd be pretty easy for me to be like, dang, bro, like freaking, why you got to say it like that? Like, why would you ever be on it? But I didn't take it like that. I, I don't feel like you're saying it like that. You're yeah, just no, sort of trying a to legitimate figure it out. question. Like, why, why would you be on it? Yeah. That didn't make sense to me. Yeah. And I had it in my brain, just like I said, where, bro, I'll just be the person you're talking to. I'll just be normal. I'll be a normal person, you know? And if I have questions, I'll ask questions, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to just, you be talking to somebody rather than talking to the microphone or talking to the screen by yourself or whatever, which, you know, that's fine too, but it's just, and so I was essentially like thinking of Joe Rogan's podcast where he's like talking to somebody the whole time. Mm -hmm. Someone's there listening and chiming in whenever that's my, that was my little engineered perceived or conceived. Yeah. You know, you know, what what I was thinking about, I've told you this before when it comes to having multiple people on the same podcast, like on our podcast. We don't haven't had many episodes where we've had more than one person to interview. Yeah. One of the reasons is, like I already talked about and we already talked about, if there's a bunch of people talking, I won't talk. Yeah. And so what I was thinking to myself, well, when I'm getting interviewed by Tim Ferriss, he's asking me questions. Okay, I answer them because I'm being you know, I'm being asked a question, so I'm gonna answer it. Joe Rogan's asking me questions, I'm gonna answer them. But if you put me into a situation where there's multiple people that, and they wanna talk, I'll just let them talk, yeah. I'll listen. So in my mind, I was like thinking, well, if I have someone else on there, then I'll just sit there and let listen them. to them talk. Oh, yeah. And well, if people, if Tim Ferriss is telling me to have a podcast, he's not telling me to have a podcast so I can sit there and listen to someone else, I should be talking. Right. Okay, got it. So for me, I had to get over the the idea of like, oh, well, and then I thought you, like I said earlier, you're not a person that, you know, when we're having a normal conversation, you're not one of these people that's like, hold on, wait, listen right. to my viewpoint. You're yeah. a person that goes, oh, that's cool, interesting. You're, you, you will listen as much as I will. And yeah. so that's why I thought, okay, cool, yeah, makes sense. Good yeah. call, Echo Charles. Yeah, fully. And keep in mind too, yes, it was like the, a partially my selfish reasons, like I wanted to be on a podcast <laughs> for sure. But not at any moment was I being like, hey, so I can be a star too. It was, <laughs> but I didn't have that at all. Like I knew what I was getting into yeah. and I knew why I could do it. Not because I have all these cool things to say, because I don't really like in my mind, like I'm, that's not what I'm thinking, <laughs> especially compared to you. I'm li- I just listened to Tim for that interview with Tim Ferriss. I'm like, bro, I literally could, could never bring anything like this to the table. But if you're over here talking about like stuff, 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 and, and I have just little detailed questions about that just mm. to clarify what you're saying or whatever, like I think that I could facilitate in that way. And not to mention just technically, I could make the whole thing happen and I have my own little creative ideas as well with that. So I'm figuring, yeah, that's it. But yeah, it, it never even entered my mind that like 
it's my podcast. I'm going to talk, you know, and you're going to sort of listen to me sometimes. You know? So you did have a vision for the podcast a loose because one. Yeah. the v- podcast number one, I had a vision too. My vision was basically what the podcast is right now. That's what I had the vision of. Hey, we're going to execute this thing like a military operation. Boom. It's good. And the first podcast starts off with your vision, which is, you know, we're kind of talking and then we kind of. We kind of uh, drift into We're the beginning of the podcast, good. and then we kind of drift. Yeah. And, and actually, you know, as you know me and my kind of leadership principles at this time, I wasn't 100% sure that I was right. I just thought to myself, this is what it'll be, and then you had a different idea, and then we didn't really talk about it until the next podcast. Yeah. And then I came in and was like, because I listened to it, and I was like, yeah, that's not, we, we shouldn't do it that way. In my mind, I was like, well, I don't think we should do it that way. I think this thing should start. Yeah. And one thing that I wanted it to do was like start. Right. Like when you press play, yeah, yeah. when you press, I I wanted people when they put their headphones on and press play, they were like, okay, here it comes. And that means no intro music. That means no advertisements rolling in. It's like, hey, this is Jocko Podcast number four. Here we go. Rock and roll. And and so that's what we started doing on podcast number two. Yeah. What's what's funny is like that. Um, so the, so there was two kind of thoughts, and I didn't think it out fully, but I just kind of sort of felt like you know, mm-hmm. cre- It was like a creative feeling, I guess, maybe that drove that decision to make to be like, oh yeah, just sort of roll into it casually, because you know, like certain movie, like movies start in all kind of different ways, yeah. right? Some movies start just the way how you were saying, like you want to start, like it begins, and then yeah. some movies just sort of start unfold. Yeah, they don't no credits, no nothing, but it just sort of like. People are just sort of doing something. And mm. you're like, wait, what are they doing? Okay, let me see. You know, boom, and it sort of slowly develops into this thing. Then it maybe hits you with something and boom, boom, boom. So I remember like, I vaguely remember editing it and being like, when should I start? Because we're talking a bunch before that mm-hmm. too. And then, so when should I just roll into this? And then it was like me talking actually. It was like, what is that? Pomegranate, pomegranate chai, chai. <laughs> tea. Because you're drinking the white tea. <laughs> and you're like white tea, yeah. And then, man, I remember thinking that. I was like, man, yeah, that one's cool. But then, yeah, you shut it down real quick. You were like, that is whack. <laughs> but you, I think even thinking back on it, the way you, had, and given what you t- wound up talking about and stuff yeah. like that, it's, yours is way better. Like, way better. Yeah, and I just did a bad job of out of the gate kind of explaining, oh, yeah, hey, this is where, right. yeah, we didn't talk about it. Yeah. But what's interesting, too, is, uh, I think it was Brand, you know Brandon Pickworth. Yeah, yeah. So he he was talking to me. It was a while ago. He was like saying that out of the gate with this podcast, it's you know when you hear people you go, oh, listen to Joe Rogan's first podcast, or listen to Tim, even Tim Ferriss will say, listen to my first podcast. I know what I was doing. It's mono. It's this. It's that. Mm. And it takes a while for people to kind of figure out where they're going. Yeah. I mean, it might take twenty, thirty, a hundred episodes or whatever. Mm-hmm. At least thirty, forty, fifty of people trying, where they kind of find their groove. And Brandon was like, out of the gate, your podcast hasn't even changed that much. I mean, it's, we did make, you know, I I mean, I think we've improved, we've improved our audio, we'd probably speak better now, but it wasn't like, it's not this drastic turnaround from, we were doing something radically different. The, The podcast is essentially the same now as it was on episode one. It's essentially the same thing. Yeah. And so I th- and I think that did that is based on what I thought the podcast was going to be like, and I should have done a better job of saying, "Hey, here's what we're doing." Yeah, but I didn't. You but, know, yeah. I didn't. If you remember, if you and even think about it right now, you ne- we don't like especially like creative stuff. Like you don't, we don't really talk about. You're just like you just do it, and then if I jam- <laughs> if I go off the rails in one way or another, then you'll tighten me back up, or whatever. But yeah, we never did. Like yeah. the, it was like you said like one thing like hey we should do it in black and white. Actually, did you even say that? Yes, yeah, of course yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and that was sort of it. And then we talked about like the inter like the ideal look would be like an interrogation room. Yeah. I mean, I use the term interrogation room, yeah. but just like super simple or whatever. But yeah, other than that, we're just you just sort of like let me do whatever yeah. with varying levels of success, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, and uh, so then that that came out of the gate. It was we got really lucky. I mean, at the time there wasn't a lot of pod. There was, there was a lot of podcasts, but there wasn't even close to the number of podcasts that there are now, and um, that went that went forward pretty quick. And next thing you know, we were 
like on it was it was happening yeah. i mean it was happening meaning meaning this idea of of hey this is this will be cool to try mm-hmm. they went from this will be cool to try to like we this is rolling. this is what we're doing yeah. it went to that in two or three episodes yeah i mean maybe it was even one episode i mean the first episode came out and it and it was like okay everyone said more right. and had we did we know yeah we did know we were going i told you we were going to do one a week i think i think that was from the beginning yeah. It was like, hey, we're going to do one a week. And yeah. there was a time when I wavered for a little while, probably 40 episodes in or something, where I was like, I don't know if I can keep, I don't know right. if I can, pr- I don't know if I can get this much content read. I don't know right. if I can do this. So we might have to go to one every two weeks. And right. I got shut down by the people. Oh, yeah, yeah. The I people do shut that. me down. Yeah. Yeah, I forget when that was, but yes, I remember that happening. Dude, I told I told a couple of people that Echelon Front was working with. One guy named Mike, great guy. I was going to a job site with him, and I just we were driving, and I said, "Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about going to like maybe putting the podcast once every two weeks." And, and, <laughs> and pulled over. It was yeah. It was like I told him that you know there was a disease. You know, it was like really bad, and. And he that seeing his reaction, there was one other person I told the same thing and got the same exact reaction, which was like, he, they were almost, he was almost like lost for words, yeah, yeah. you know? Because this was early. Mm-hmm. So there was still, it wasn't like you could go, oh, well, I'll just listen to one that I haven't listened to or one I haven't heard in a while. This was, right. hey, there's only this many episodes yeah. and I'm waiting for the next one. Yeah. You know, and I remember him being, oh, you, you, you know, you, you should think about that. And I remember what he said. He said, uh, he said, because there's people that are waiting for these to come out. Yeah. And I said to myself, oof, okay, yeah. I got to, I got to get, I got to work harder. Yeah. And I could, and I, Be it more makes sense. Yeah. Just work harder, dude. Um, it makes sense too, because of how like, you know, you were pretty act, like engaged with the people too. And I, and I was too, like mm-hmm. where people would be like, Hey, that was this. And that was fine. And you'd be engaged like online on mm-hmm. Twitter and stuff like that. So it kind of like, it really felt like in, in a lot of ways, it still does feel like we were sort of all in this together. Mm-hmm. Like everyone, like me and you doing it. And then everyone, whoever was listening, like they were kind of in it too, you yeah. know? And so it still feels like that. Yeah, fully. And what's crazy is you go to Australia where we just were mm-hmm. and it's the same way. Oh, I mean, yeah. We're uh, literally the other side of the world. And people are asking me about, hey, when you said this in episode 48, did you think? And I'm like, yes, I did think that. I could tell. You know, yeah. people are that into it. Yeah. Which is awesome. But back in the day when it's when you first sort of start, you're, that feeling is so on the front of your mind. Like, it mm. feels like we were just all doing it. People are giving me input because I'm trying to... Look, I mean, I don't know about you, but I was trying to figure out a lot of stuff early on as well, like how to get certain things done or accomplish or whatever. And people were, trying, you know, jumping out of the woodwork, kind of like, hey, you should do this better. You know, you should compress the audio. You should do. This. So I'm taking advice. I'm, you know, so we're all sort of in it together. And there was one episode. I forget what episode it was when it sort of hit a, a point where there was so many downloads that it crashed our website and the like the podcast, <laughs> like the hosting. Right. <laughs> and it. um Cause you know, when you start, I don't know about that. I don't know about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like where after it a certain amount. It seems crazy too to think that. Yeah. It seemed, it, it seemed crazy to think that we would have enough downloads that it would crash the system. Yeah. Yeah. So, and f- so of course, I mean, whether that, whether or not that came across my mind, you know, maybe, maybe not, but it wasn't like a worry. I wasn't concerned about that at all. I was like, no, this is a, it's a computer, like whatever. Yeah. So, you know, you have this host for this and the website and this and that um and the 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 moment that i was like oh, okay there's a lot of people like <laughs> depending on this for lack of a better way of putting it is when it crashed on the day that i you know released a podcast it crashes it says like you know whatever it says technically i gotta do all this stuff and just twitter facebook like emails like through the website my personal email like yeah. coming in like where's the podcast web and it, it was probably way less of a deal than than it seemed like to me at the time but still when you get like essentially let's face it strangers people i don't know like just by the hundreds just saying where's the podcast where's the podcast it's kind of like them saying hey where's our where's our dinner you know like where's our podcast and i'm like oh my gosh i'm like freaking all worried then at the end of that, i'm like worried about you like oh man if i'm feeling this and i'm not even the star of the podcast what the hell is jocko thinking and he's gonna kill me and all this stuff and regret even doing this with me should have did it with some professional guy out and all this stuff and then 
every once in a while you'd text me, hey, so how, how's it going? So to me, the, the way that, the way I interpreted that, how's it going, is like, what the hell? Like, the freaking, <laughs> but then you'd call every once in a while. Because this was a, a matter of days, like days are going on still. No, Wait, this no is, love. Well, this is when uh, the podcast crashed. When it crashed. And I would text you like, hey. Yeah, like how's it how's coming? It going? Yeah. Are, are we making any progress? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> any progress. I remember I was on an op. I was in Iraq. I was on my first deployment. And we were traveling a far distance to the south of Iraq. There was some mayhem going on. We're traveling through this city. There's eerie. There's people whistling. It's just, it's the middle of the night. And we get lost and we're driving around and I'm I'm tracking and so finally we stop and I go up to the lead nav who's a great guy in the lead vehicle and I look at him and I and I could see the look in his eyes like we're lost. He doesn't know where we are. Yeah. And I go, I go, how's it going, bro? And and like just that right there, like he his just his look of panic when I said, "Hey, how's it how's it going, bro?" His look of panic went down a little bit, oh. and he goes, "I don't know where we are." And I go, "Okay, cool." This is, I I literally said, "I go, okay, cool. We're gonna set a perimeter. Take your time, figure out where we're at, and how we can get back on track. Let me know when you're ready." And he goes, "Roger that." And, and then it allowed him to actually decompress for a second and figure out where we were. And it took him a minute, two minutes, and then he, you know, we, we did it. Yeah. So that idea of t- instead of texting you, where is this yeah, podcast? People are waiting for it. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. We making any progress? Yeah. Yeah. So. And so that became clear when you actually like would call. And be like, hey, you'd be like, same thing. I think you even said the same thing. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> like in that way. <laughs> and you're right, man. It's it, like, because, bro, I'm not used to that. You know, like when something's that was going pressure. On. You're not work. Yeah, you're not used to pressure. Well, no, no, no. I'm used to some pressure. I mean, let's face it. I'm from Kauai. Not that much pressure, but <laughs> we're you know working for people and the deadline and hurry up and right. you know like this and you know where are we with it? Something going wrong and stuff like that. I, that okay. I'm no stranger to that, but the reaction for the people who I'm working quote unquote for, I'm not used to them being so cool about it. I'm <laughs> usually them saying, "Where are we?" You know, their frustration is now you know. Yeah kind of part of my world, my added press or, or stress or whatever. So when you came with that, with, hey, how's it going, bro? It was like, I was like, dang, this is like, it really helped. It really helped a lot. So <laughs> meanwhile, but still, the problem's still there. Meanwhile, I'm not getting that level of coolness from the general public, no. <laughs> our people. <laughs> and it, you know, it morphed into jokes about Echo, how he's, I don't know, cruising too hard and like all this stuff, which is kind of cool, I guess is funny. But um, anyway, then our savior, Brady Lanter, comes and is like, hey, I can I can help you with this and all the, all, knows all this technical background stuff, which I knew like a little bit from mm. web development, but he knew like the real tech side. And man, he basically took my hand and held my hand and called some people and boom, boom, you got to do this. Hey, we got to spend a little bit more money to do this, but we can, we can patch it up. And Mm -hmm. man, he got it, he got it rolling and like literally solved that problem forever. So man, but the point is there where that's when I, I knew that, yeah, like how you say, like, you can't really do it twice or once every two weeks because people were like, hey, 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 we kind of need this thing. That's when it was clear to me that, yeah, man, it's, we kind of have, like we're all kind of in this together and you can't just bust out once every two weeks. Yeah, and you also can't, and I mean, I always feel this way about everything too, but you also can't be like, oh, you know what, we'll just throw something together and put it out there. Like that's not happening. So it has to be a real effort 100% of the time. Yeah. Or it's a failure. (laughs) All right, so. That's cool. You get some technical knowledge from just the function of being the guy that's putting this stuff together. Mm-hmm. What about just from sitting across the table for, what are we, almost four years? Yep. Yeah, almost four years. What are the lessons learned from a broader perspective, life wise? Well, they, yeah, it started quick too. So, okay, so remember. Okay, well, the early episodes, like I would, I would drink, I would have a drink going, 
you know. Yeah. I wouldn't get hammered or nothing like and that. And when you say drink, you mean alcoholic alcohol, yeah, like beverage. We're not talking something. a Jocko Discipline Go or a Jocko White Tea right, or right. maybe a little hit Discipline hitter. Yeah, You're talking, yeah. you're drinking, what did you used to drink? Vodka and... Soda water. There you go. Yeah, or, or sometimes a beer or whatever. But it was like, that was one of those things. And not that I was like nervous doing it, but I was like kind of nervous going into it kind of thing. And it was just, yeah, like a little comfort thing or whatever. And... It was one of those things where you didn't necessarily tell me like, hey, you don't need to do that. You know, like you or that's weak or nothing. You didn't tell me that. But there was always like this feeling of it, you know, <laughs> and it kind of hit me where it, that's like ESP, right? What is yeah, that? What is kind that? What is the ESP <laughs> stand? Extra sensory perception. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. me just kind of willing yeah. like thoughts into your head, I guess. But there's. <laughs> I'd say one of the early uh, things that you said, and not necessarily to me, but just on the podcast that, you know, like you say a lot of stuff and it's kind of like, and you are essentially talking to me, right? We're, you're sitting across talking to me. But one of the things you said was, um, you already know the right thing to do. You just have to do it. Then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm thinking like, okay, I heard that before, but, I, but you start to think about it. Like, oh man, that's true, huh? Like you just, you just, you know, already, it's not like a big, like mystery, like, you know, so it's like, what are... Because it's kind of lame to know the right thing to do and not do it. There has to be something, too, with the fact that you're not just hearing me say the words, but you are a person that actually sees what I'm doing on a daily basis in a way. Yeah. You right. know what I'm doing. Yeah. You, you see what I'm doing. So when I'm saying that, it's not like, oh, you, uh, whatever, uh, what's that word? Drifted through a right. what's that called? Scrolled through your Instagram feed, and yeah. someone said, "You already know what to do. Just do it." Through You're actually words. watching me and saying, "Oh yeah, he's he yeah. knows what he's supposed to do, and he's doing it." Yes. So, and and here's here's when that part became clear, where the first time. Okay, so okay, so I'm recording a podcast. Let's say five episodes in. We'll just say I don't know. Maybe it was more. Maybe it was less. But. Five episodes in, it's like, okay, that's five weeks. Every week now, you're, and we were recording in my house at mm -hmm. this time, and you'd come up, and it was like at night. Too. Yep, we have to do it after uh, Prezi was asleep. Yeah, after everyone's going to sleep, and, uh, and you'd come up. We'd record, I'm like, cool. And then one time I'm like, shoot, this is like, again, again, again. And then you're coming in with your notes and all this stuff. I'm like, man, this guy is like, <laughs> bro, this guy's no quit. Because it was like, you can be doing the coolest, funnest thing, but when it's like coming again and again and again, you're like, whoa, let me, let me take a rest between <laughs> sets here a little bit, you know, <laughs> but nope, not you. You're just rolling in. And then after a while, when, it, when I started getting used to it, that's when I'd like sort of reflect like, man, if you weren't here doing this right now, if I, let's say I had fulfilled my own little weirdo dream of having a podcast and, and that's my job, I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have done it. As mu as often, for sure, <laughs> I would have started like slowing down or whatever, because there would be times where I'd be like, "Man, maybe we should just take this week off," kind of thing. And it's not like it's this crazy hard work. I'm just saying, it's just that's sort of how it is. But it seems like that didn't phase you at all. I remember one time I had a gig on the East Coast, and I flew, and then I had another gig on the East Coast, and I had whatever a day in between. Yeah. And we and we owed a podcast, yeah. and I flew back to San Diego. We went recorded the podcast, and I flew back out to the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. And I said, "Hmm, that's what we're doing here. Yeah. We're getting this podcast yep. done." Yeah, man. And that's it's like that is so such a for lack of a better term, like I'm so lucky in that way because like that that's not a like an, a, a rare thing where you're hanging around with someone and they rub off on you, you know, where you knew all this stuff, but since the person right next to you is doing it, then you start to do it. You know, it's mm. like, like jujitsu, you mm -hmm. know, you hear about jujitsu, we know about jujitsu or whatever, but it's like, what if like your brother starts doing jujitsu or whatever, or the people at work start doing jujitsu, then you know, let me go check this out. It like, mm -hmm. it, it kind of influences you, you know, in that way. So it's lucky that like, and if this is every week, not to mention all the training jujitsu, so I'm around you more and we're talking about it and it's new and exciting. So we're always talking about, it. so, oh yeah, man, I was just primed for influence at that time. So at that point I was like, yeah, man, he, he's really doing it. And going back to, you already know the right thing to do. You just have to do it. Mean, so I'm like, okay. And then I see you doing it. So that influenced me to like really take that into consideration as far as like daily conscious thought, you know? So, so then what did, that, what did that actually turn into as far as action-wise? 
Okay, at first I stopped drinking. And here's the thing. I didn't stop drinking, but I, I stopped drinking where that was like a habit. So I stopped that. And so you went from you used, did you used to drink every day? Every day, yeah. How often do you drink now? Uh, there's no like often. Like sometimes I'll drink, sometimes I won't. But yeah, yeah. Once a month, once a week. Some yes, like sometimes none a month, zero a month. But then sometimes like three times a week, whatever. And this is just how it shook itself out. Like now it's not a habitual thing every night. You know, it's mm. just it's more of a yeah, I can maneuver my way through any like drinking scenario, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't even know if I was like addicted, like an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe technically on paper or something, maybe, but it was the kind and it was basically this. If I had three and I think I told you this before where there was three factors with me drinking a lot. And that was if I was undisturbed, meaning by like my family or, or any like obligations, you know, like I got to drive somewhere or, or take care of the kids mm-hmm. or whatever. Undisturbed. Meaning um, you, if you had no responsibility at a certain time. At a certain time, yeah. So then that's an opportunity to drink and a likelihood to drink. Yes. Okay. That was a factor. Put it got it. Way. And then um, the other one was uh, obviously alcohol present, right? And then the third one was being in front of my computer. That was it. If any of those, if one or more of those three factors were not there, like I wouldn't drink. I, I'm not mm. compelled to drink at all. Mm. You know, like I'm not against drinking. Like I'll go out and drink sake or something, and eat a sushi, yeah. whatever. But it was a non-factor. But if you get those three, especially back then, if I had those three present, which was essentially every night, the kids go to bed. You know, I don't have to wake up early for something specific or whatever. Um, my computer, and it's weird because it wasn't my laptop when I'm traveling or something like that. It was like my home computer. <laughs> it's weird, but if those three things were present, like it was, all, it was pretty much uncontrollable. So then, what was it that broke that? That that thing, like you're a thing, mm. where it's like you know the right thing to do, you just got to do. You know, like, and this is, I think, always going to be the case. I'm sure it's something that has to do with your brain, but like you can know the right thing to do. You can do, you know, how, but you over. It's almost like you oversimplify it. You're like, hey, how do you wake up early? wake up early mm-hmm. you know but a real person will be like how do i wake up early okay yeah i wake up early yeah that's where i want to get how do i do that and you're like yeah just do it it's like you're skipping all these like mental hula hoops <laughs> and d- acrobatics that normal people do on like emotions and habits mm-hmm. and like all this like stuff that we have to sort of go through to get there you know because we like certain comforts in fact not only do we like them it's like we sort of need them in a in a little bit a little bit of a tell way yourself you need them. Right, exactly right. And you kind of oversimplify it. So coming from someone just t- telling you that, oh, yeah, just wake up early. You're like, okay, like I shouldn't even have asked you because that's essentially in a way it's not really what I'm asking. Like I know that part. Like how do I get there? How do I make that part like more accessible or that ability more accessible to, to myself? That's kind of what they're asking. But meanwhile, like I'm watching you do all these things and it's kind of like that's how you are. You just oversimplify it kind of thing. Like you just, all right, I'm just going to do it. Granted, there's more to it, but like uh, what I'm seeing, you just do it. So I'm like, right, well, I guess I'm just going to do it then. And then you do it. Then it's kind of like, oh, bro, I should have done that like 10 years ago. <laughs> that is literally how simple it is. Granted, it'll make it'll be just as simple or just as complex and hard and, and um, you know, slippery of a situation as as you make it. As you allow it to be. Yeah. And allow it. Yeah. But. When you kind of, when I think back on uh, on it for myself, I'm like making it complicated, Ma- like putting effort into making it. Com- and I still do it. Yeah, I think that's my habit. Further. It's one step yeah. further than allowing it to be. It's oh, actually yeah. making it complicated. And I think that's how most of us are. That's the thing. So, okay. So here's another thing that I that I learned when you're like, um, and it it does go back to just you know the right thing to just do it, regardless of how you feel about like working out, right? Mm-hmm. So I. Working out, I liked working out, weightlifting and stuff. I, I sort of liked it, you know, sort of one of those things to look forward to. But, you know, as you get older, you have other responsibilities, all this stuff. You don't necessarily like it as much, but you know it's good for you and all this stuff. So there was a point where it was e- real easy to justify and skip workouts. Let's do it tomorrow, whatever, mm-hmm. um, because I don't feel like it. I can, didn't get enough rest or I'm doing this other thing or whatever, right? 
But if you're just like, hey, you know what needs to be done? You just do it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. But that's not really how my brain worked. My brain worked where I was, I was kind of dependent on that, that, that good feeling of looking forward to working out and getting fired up and working out. I was kind of dependent on that feeling. You don't realize it, but it's there fully where you're dependent on it. So you're just like, yeah, you just don't think about it. Just do it. But I'm like, wait, but I, but I really don't feel like it. <laughs> you know, like that's just a given. I don't feel like, like that's a given part of the equation. So then what I would do is, okay, I'll just do it, but not do it like I just do it as in work out. I just do it as in try to get fired up and try to get myself motivated and get, get fired up to do this stuff. But that's not, that's not how it works. You just get, you don't, you don't work harder to get that unnecessary part of it into the equation. Yeah. I mean, you can if it works for you, but, but that's not the point you were, that I took from it. The point is you skip that. Like you just go work out, just yeah. do it, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, it's so simple when I'm like saying it out loud. It's like, yeah, it seems so no, obvious. That's, that's, but, bro. Uh, that's a good connection to make. That's bro. a good connection to make when it's like, just go do the activity. Yeah. It's not just, it's not, hey, just force yourself to get fired up. Yeah. Just force yourself. No. Because yeah. you can't even do that. Yes. Yeah. I it guess you hard. could try, but yeah. you, why waste the energy on that? Just go do the activity that yep. you're supposed to do. Yeah. And then another thing is like, you make a good point. It's like a lot of this stuff is just sort of there, and you're just there to like grab my hand and like be like, here, see the, see the thing you've been seeing this whole time? Here you it know is. what's crazy? You know? Okay. So when you're learning jujitsu, have you ever learned something in jujitsu? Well, you cannot believe that you couldn't figure that out, that you didn't figure that out. I'll give you an example. Here's a real simple example. Um, you're mounted on someone and they start to push your knee or with their hand or their elbow to start an elbow escape. Mm -hmm. I remember like people would do this to me. I mean, I'm, I'm a white belt, maybe even I'm a blue belt. Mm -hmm. And I think I asked Dean, I'm like, hey Dean, what do you do when they start pushing? And he goes, oh, so he does it to me, or he, you know, he he mounts me and he goes here, push my knee. So I start pushing his knee. He reaches down with his hand, and pulls it off. Yeah, yeah. And 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 the answer was so obvious. Yeah. And this is one of hundreds of examples. And I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I'm not that stupid either. And for me to not be able to figure out certain things, it shows you that. If you can't, it shows you that there's certain things that can be right in front of your face yep. and you just don't see them. Yep. And I think that's what you're talking about. That like, is what, that is exactly I'm not holding your hand, but I'm just going, hey, no, 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 wait, let me show you exactly what to do here. You just do this. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, mm. yep. and there's a lot, you know, there's, I've heard many people have told me uh, that that's what they got from the podcast or that that's what they got from extreme ownership or the dichotomy of leadership or the discipline equals freedom field manual. They're like, I always thought that I always knew that. Yeah. I mean, I was just with an Australian when we were at the monster, you know, with an Australian guy that was in the military for what, a long time, and he said, "Yeah, when I read when I read your book, I was like, yes, you just put into words what I the way I've been trying to lead, and the good thing about that is, you have the idea in your head of what's good, but you don't necessarily codify it where you can now say, yes, this is the answer. Yeah. So that that's a it's a big step. Yeah. It's like occasionally you randomly pull the hand that's getting you in the mouth. Yeah. You might do it occasionally, but you don't actually know it and identify it as something you can do. Whereas once you go, oh, when someone's doing that, here's the reaction, boom, do. Yeah. So there's there's a definite plus to that. Yeah, and, and that rabbit hole of like revelations like that is, is endless and it keeps <laughs> like going and going and going and and certain things you sort of forget too you know because you know a human being we're all human beings with habits and stuff like that so you forget certain ones or whatever but man it's like they're everywhere they're everywhere so even like the whole just the whole concept of if you don't feel like doing it but you need you know that it has to get needs to get done or whatever or even just that you want it to be done but you don't feel like it just the just excluding the part that you don't feel like it just doing that seems like super simple and easy or it seems easy it is very simple mm -hmm. it seems like pretty easy when you say it and then when you go through it it's like it seems so hard but the weird thing and this is nothing new where once you once you get it done like okay so an email right i don't know you may or may not go through this but a lot of us go through this where it's like you have this nagging email of someone that you have to respond to someone mm -hmm. and to respond to them, you need certain information. Mm -hmm. And to get that information, you got to go reopen mm -hmm. some files and stuff like that. It's, it'll take two minutes, two mm -hmm. minutes, probably not even two minutes, but you gotta, 
your brain has to stop thinking this way and it has to pivot and change these weird directions and do all this other stuff, right? Yeah. So you just, man, I don't feel like doing that right now. I'm doing this other stuff. Or I'm just not doing that right now. I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it later today, whatever. And then it winds up being like weeks. And the, meanwhile, it's still there. The email's still, still there. Still hanging over your head. Hanging over your head. Then you're like, I just had to right. talk about that on the Warrior Kid podcast. Letting your homework hang over your head. Yeah. And they actually, there's some kids that probably didn't know what hang over your head. I kind of kind of explain what that means. Yes. Because when something's hanging over your head, what are you waiting? You're waiting for that Through thing to hit fly. you in the head. <laughs> yeah. So you don't want yeah, that. Yeah. You go when you get home from school, do your homework. Don't let it hang over you. It ruins yeah. your whole night. So totally that email does. is going to ruin your whole night. Your whole thing. Your whole yeah. life. Your whole life. So, I mean, not in this huge <laughs> way, but it'll be nagging. Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. it's kind of like when, when you're sleeping and you got to use the bathroom and you're like, oh, uh, just go use the bathroom. <laughs> you don't want to get stand up. Just go, just do it. Anyway. So meanwhile, okay. Then finally you're like, you know what? Finally, I feel like it. Or finally, I can't take it anymore. Finally, it's irritating. It's irritating me enough. So I'll do it. You go in the email, you take care of the thing, you do it. It takes two minutes or whatever. You're done. And you're like, bro, why didn't I just do that a long time ago? I wouldn't have felt any of that stress or whatever. And so, but habitually going in, into that mode where it's like, okay, this needs to get done. I don't care how I feel. I'm just going to do it real quick. Like that in and of itself is a habit, is a way, you know, is a, a, a way of thinking that at the very least. So if that was something that I got better at as well. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's been interesting, well, interesting from my perspective is that you are de facto detached during this whole thing. So you get to be, I mean, first of all, even when, if I'm covering a book, I mean, you're listening, but you get to kind of observe me reading the book, thinking about the book, talking about the book. When we have guests on, a lot of times you don't say anything and you're just completely getting to observe this whole thing unfold from the outside. Mm -hmm. So you, I know I've, we've gotten done with some podcasts and, and someone would ask me, say like, well, how was that? Mm -hmm. Like one of our guests would say, how was it? And I'll look at you and say, how was it? Cause I'm in it yep. and you have a better perspective cause you are literally detached and watching it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm somewhat detached, but I'm also reading, writing, uh, um, thinking, yeah. engaging, answering. So I'm doing all those things and I'm detached from that enough. You know, I'm detached from it enough that I can guide the conversation. I'm detached from it enough that I'm not getting too emotional or too stuck on something or, I mean, let's let's face it, there's been some danger close calls where those emotions are creeping up, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sitting yeah. across from a from a guy that's, you know, what been through whatever and you're bringing those emotions back out of them and I mean, it can get danger close for yes. sure. And yes. sometimes yes. I got to do a little detachment <laughs> to keep it real. Yes. But you are. And sometimes I do a better job of detaching on those than you do cuz cuz you'll be over in the court or you'll yeah. be sitting in yeah. your chair, you know, and I got to yeah. I got to try and keep it together. Yeah. Cuz you're not so, Amen. but that's sometimes, yeah. sometimes you get wrapped up in the emotions of the story yourself, especially if it has to do with kids, yeah. you kind of lose the bubble. Mm -hmm. And so, but other than those moments, a lot of times you're sitting there just listening and, and you're detached. So you kind of get to, you kind of get a great perspective of it, yeah. which is nice. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'd say I'm like maybe 60% maybe 50% detached because I'm like, a, I'm the audience member just like everybody else. Really? Like when you're talking about stuff and, or when you're interviewing someone like, man, I'm, I'm enjoying the show like everybody else, but I'm like in the show as well, you know? So as an audience member, we'll say, uh, that's how I can evaluate. Hey, that was a good show. Or like, Bro, what are you guys even talking about right now? Kind of thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that it's ever happened. I'm not saying it has, you know, but um, that, and that's why it is, you know, so yeah, I will be affected by these things and, but then I'll be affected even more because yes, I am part of it. Like I'm in it, you know, I'm sit sitting here across from you guys. Um, but yes. Yeah. Because when you're talking, um, whether it be you or even like, let's say when I'm, t I'm talking to you even right now, mm -hmm. like there's a few things sort of rolling in my brain, like, okay, sure. I say what I'm going to say, my little idea and it comes out, but then there's like a post talk 
thought as assessment. well. Like, dang, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like a little assessment. Like, shit, or am I saying the right thing? You know, or did that sound dumb? It's like it's just a constant, like, small, like, humming evaluation kind of mm. process that's going on. And then it's like, okay, like, do I want to interrupt? At this point, because I have a thought, but no, I couldn't. So I'm sort of minding my P's and Q's as well. You know, so there's all these little things that hold you in and not it won't. It'll kind of keep you from being detached. But I don't have that when I'm not saying anything, yeah. you know. But, yeah, even you, I mean, I would imagine you're, you kind of have the same thing. You know, you have to run this. You have to, you know. Yeah, I got to think about what I'm saying at the same time. This is, this is the dichotomy of that. If you think about what you're saying too much, it's not going to yeah. be good. Yeah. Just like jujitsu, right? If you're thinking about a move, it's too late. If you're if you're analyzing what you're going to say before it comes out of your mouth to make sure that's the right thing, well, you, you're, you, it's not not the right thing to do. Mm. At the same time, you can't just go verbal diarrhea yeah. and yep. just start spewing stuff out because well, now yeah. you now you may say some stuff that you shouldn't say. Yep. So there's a a little a little game that you have to play. You have to you have to kind of assess that stuff. You have to be detached when you're doing it to make sure mm. that you don't say something stupid and you can say stupid stuff i mean i i think about the amount of interviews i've done and and just like you yeah you, know, you never know when it's going to come i'm sure at yeah. some point i'm going to say something and go Oof, i yeah. wish i wouldn't have said that uh, yeah. i should have never said that um because you, you know, it is what it is yeah and you could i mean and it makes sense too where you can you can have a certain thought and then there's like how do you say that thought right like how do you how do you uh articulate your thoughts right and to expect or to think that like if you have a thought it'll be perfectly articulated or whatever those don't go hand in hand you know some people are super good at it like in fact you're like you're one of the better people that i've witnessed anyway that at that probably you know probably because you keep things pretty simple most of the time but at the same time like you're not immune to that you know so sometimes like your articulation of a certain thought will come off like different you know, it'll come off like it might even be accurate, but then the way it'll land on people will be like, OK. And I'm not saying this necessarily has happened. I'm mm -hmm. saying this this type of stuff can't happen. So it'll be like, oh, yeah, you came off as like insensitive or you don't understand or, mm -hmm. or you're racist or you're, you know, like all these interpretations that seem like reasonable interpretations, given the words that you said. Mm -hmm. But it's like, man, that was just I shouldn't have said it that way because it's not quite as accurate as what yeah. I think, you know. So, yeah, you got to constantly monitor, monitor that. So it'll jam you up. Got to be careful like, that. Yeah. What about in terms of relationships like your wife? What have you taken oh, yeah. away? Just take it. Oh, man. Does your wife does your wife like you more now? Yeah. Or before? <laughs> I think I think she likes me more now. Um put it this way like I I like our relationship better now. And that's saying a lot because like we have a good even we already had a good relationship. Yeah. You know, like I was one of these we were like these people who we knew each other before we started dating. Like mm -hmm. we knew it. So there was no like I, I you can you can get in you can jam yourself up i think sometimes like if you jump into a, a dating situation like super early and then a marriage situation super early and whatever like you can jam yourself up i'm not saying it always happens but you mm -hmm. can and i'm not saying if you know someone for a long time and take it slow i'm not saying that's a perfect like solution i'm not saying that but in our case we took it like super slow so there was like we had a solid foundation have a solid foundation so the point there we had a good relationship but you know, like any relationship, there's like arguments and, you know, misunderstanding. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have acted like that. You know, there's like way less of that. Like, cause I know like habitually how to, how to act, you know? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So extreme ownership, right? <laughs> extreme ownership. Heard that, of it. That goes deep, bro. It, it, it's, that's a constant, like that rabbit hole right there is like you've at first, when you first like get introduced to it like oh yeah everything and you're like yeah okay makes sense yeah, I, yeah, I cool i got it. that yeah, yeah, yeah i get the concept take over ownership here. don't blame i get it right but there's like so many levels of blaming so many there's like the overt like hey you should have done this like blaming mm -hmm. right the kind of, i think it i say it i'm blaming 100 percent. then there's like oh you know it's not your fault but inside your head you're like it's your fault you know so that'll drive certain other like uh, subsequent like behavior you know then there's like oh, okay 
I know I'm supposed to take, ex- um, you're thinking this, right? I'm supposed to take extreme ownership, so I'm not going to blame them. So it's not your, it's my fault, you know. But meanwhile, your behavior doesn't like take full responsibility yeah. because kind of sort of quote unquote deep down, you know, it's not fully yeah. your fault. You know, yeah. it's kind of, and it just goes deeper and deeper, deeper, yeah. deeper. And then you find out all these little pockets of like non-extreme ownership, <laughs> you know, that you have. And to me, granted, you know, my life is very specific, but with your wife or I guess kids, but that's different. But with your wife is a good, it's a good battlefield to, to, to test that out and to learn about it because it can get so emotional, you know, like, yeah. And you don't really have a break from it. You know, it's like at work, it's like, cool. That didn't work. Even if I messed up, I can still go home to my lovely family or go out to the bar. I I have a break from it. Mm -hmm. You know, with your wife, it's like, you don't have a break from it. It's like you, you got to perform, you know, like you got to, it kind of means a lot. It matters a lot. So I think it, it works good. But at the same time, you guys both have a commitment to be there. So it's like you can get cut some slack most of the time. Obviously, it depends on your wife. But in my case, that's how it was. So what I sort of discovered and continue to discover, like just how good it works, just how good like extreme ownership just and everything that comes with it, you know, like not blaming um, all the little tips that you'll say, like, um, what is the one where like, what do you say? Absorb in something, you know, when they come at you with something that happened to them, like, can you oh, believe reflect the, and diminish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Oh man, man, gold, golden ticket right there, man. So good. good. Even like, and that reflect and diminish. In fact, you can even use it in like, you can just reflect. Oh, for you sure. You don't even have to diminish. Just jump on our side. If it doesn't mean anything, you know, yeah, yeah. Bro, just you, jump on our side right now, you know? Well, yeah, you can jump on the side. The thing is, well, the reason that diminish is important on reflect and diminish is because if you can fuel the fire even more, what you want to move towards is a solution. You yeah, want to you yeah. de-escalate the situation. Yeah. But the best way to do that is to reflect the emotions that they're showing and then diminish them a little bit. So that they come, so that they're on your side, yes, but then they start to calm down. Yeah. So you can like, um, you can ref. So the, the when I when I just said that, this, I'm thinking of like a few different scenarios where I'll just reflect. I won't even diminish until like the next day or something. Oh, okay. You know. So so essentially, it's reflecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll just reflect. Extended so, reflect. Oh man, you know how how much it does for your your relationship. Well, I, I'm speaking about myself. Yeah, so no, I no, don't no. know. But no, it's true. And and by the way, you're talking about this from a marriage perspective yes. i'm talking about it from a from a leadership perspective but and they're the same thing yeah. they're the same thing but what's interesting is you just said you know how good this is and you're right and you know what you got to be careful of that because it's an easy way to bond with someone yeah. is they come in and say the boss sucks and you go yeah the boss sucks yeah. that's actually not the right thing to do right mm-hmm. you don't want to disparage your boss mm-hmm. what you want to say is you know you want it but you don't want to say no the boss is awesome because now you're at enemies, right? right? Yeah. But when the person says, oh, the boss sucks, and you say, you know, I'm not really sure where they're making this decision from. Oh, okay, yeah. well now you're talking about a decision. So you're, you're giving them a little bit of reflection, yeah. but you're diminishing it a little bit so you can have a real conversation about what's going on. Yeah, yeah, so there's um, a certain scenario that, that is comes up a lot. This scenario literally means nothing mm. at the end of the day. So, and you'll get these, well, in my life, I'll get these from time to time where, so for example, my wife, like many wives, watch reality TV from time to time. And you know, it's the real housewives of this or married to medicine or whatever, mm-hmm. right? These these are TV r- shows. TV, <laughs> TV shows. <laughs> and they're like the, depends on your opinion, but you know, they're, in my opinion, one of the like, most like the lamest type of show, but whatever. It's real. It's these girls they throw them together, and they're all rich and super immature and doing dumb stuff and mm. yelling and blah blah blah. Sounds like awesome. No, Sounds yeah. like a great TV program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. So, but here's the thing. You know, when there's like a sort of a, you know when we're just sort of cruising, and relaxing, and whatever, and and it's on. This is what I used to do back in the day, where I'd be like, wh- like, what is this? Sh- this show is dumb. Like this Dis- whole thing is you dumb. You disparage her. Uh, the thing that she likes, right? And I, I didn't mean to, that's not what I'm meaning Which to do. Which means you're disparaging her. her. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. I'm more like I'm talking about the show. You know, you're just being truthful. You're being truthful. Exactly right. You know, you're just using radical candor. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly. But meanwhile, she'd get, I mean, she wouldn't get mad, but every once in a while she'd be like, hey, just leave me alone. You know, like, I don't, I don't, you know, talk trash about your shows. You know, I don't give you, she, she was like, I don't insult you, you know, about your shows or whatever. Meanwhile, I'm thinking like, keep in mind, I sometimes watch MacGyver and these types of shows, right? So I don't really have much of a leg to stand on. But in my head, I'm like, yeah, because my shows are awesome kind of thing, you know? Um, and the thing is, I'm not doing anything to her. I'm talking about the show, you know, kind of thing. But just like you said, it's like mm-hmm. I'm disparaging her taste and show, her choices, like basically her all this whole stuff, her whole, her whole thing. <laughs> so so I started start to realize that or whatever. So I did the whole reflect, no diminish. Because it's meaningless. The mm-hmm. show is, is me. Like, I can disparage her show in her all, which she's still going to like the show. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like she bases her life on it. This is literally meaningless. So now she'd be like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe, like, this lady did that. I'm in the room. So, of course, it could literally be a cat in the room. Mm-hmm. She'd probably say the same thing. Like, she's yeah. just saying it to yeah. someone, right? So she's like, I can't believe, I can't believe she did this. And she'll, like, rewind it or whatever. I'd be like, hell, yeah. yeah. She's so stupid. Like, kind of like I'm into the show, yeah. you know? And every once in a while, she'll catch it. She'd be like, you don't like the show or whatever. <laughs> but And the thing is, I don't. But it's kind of fun to do. Yeah. And at the same time, it's like, consider the difference, you know? Consider yeah. the difference of me saying, oh, my gosh, don't, you don't, don't rewind it. I don't care about that, so, you know? So it's like that kind of stuff as well, man, where it's like you kind of look at in you look at the whole situation as far as like the big picture, you know, where it's like, did do I do I make it a point to make a point right now? <laughs> Let you me know? answer that question for you. No. Nope. Man, that's, yeah. So when you look uh, broadly, what's what's like your most valuable thing that you've kind of adopted into your life since we started recording this podcast okay there's there at first there was one but there's two things and they might play off each other i guess but the main one is the long game versus the short game Mm. and and you said that to me early on that i was like like i would have never thought of that (laughs) given what you said it about back then um but the long game versus the short game. So I was like, man, so that stuck in my head. And since then I realized every little move you make, literally like in life, I don't care if it's like you're going to the store to go buy some, I don't know, paper towels or something. Yeah. It's like, there's always a long game and a short game in play right now. So anything, and if you think about it, anything that you're successful at, it's like you, you're at least playing the long game. Some things in life, people just aren't even playing the game. Mm. They're just going minute to minute, you know? And that's a that's short play, the short you know? Game. Yeah. <laughs> the short yeah, you know, you, 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 you caught this at one of the musters. A guy asked, how often are you thinking strategically? Yeah. Which thinking strategically is thinking the long game. Yeah. And you, you caught a clip of me getting a little bit fired up of, <laughs> of saying, you know, I'm okay. thinking strategic all the but time. Man. That's that, And that's the truth. Yeah. That is the way you should look at every decision that you make. Why would you make a decision based on the short-term outcome being positive if it has a negative long-term effect? Yeah. You just shouldn't do that. You gotta play the long game. And I'll tell you, like I am thinking strategic all the time. <laughs> so good, man. And that is so uh, beneficial. It's yeah. so beneficial in everything that you do. And yet, it's easy to get suckered in yeah. to making short-term decisions based on short-term gratification, based on the ease of movement, based on the path of least resistance, based on what's gonna feel good right now, based on even what's gonna produce good results right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, we hope that our immediate results are aligned with our long-term results and something that benefits us right now will benefit, benefit us in the long run. That's a great opportunity. That mm-hmm. does happen sometimes, but sometimes, Oftentimes, short-term gains will resent, result in long-term losses. Mm. So you got to think through this in everything that you do. Yeah, and the, and I remember one when, when that guy asked that question, mm-hmm. and I remember th- thinking to myself, hmm, that that's interesting. It kind of became clear why that's not so obvious, and there's obvious reasons why it's not For so sure. obvious. For sure, because when he asked the uh, when he asked the question, he's like, "How?" Oh, because when, even when you put it in those terms, like strategic versus tactical, right? Mm-hmm. Tactical is the short-term game. Mm-hmm. Strategic is the long-term game. Even so, when you put when you use those specific words, like, hey, so how often are you thinking strategic? It's almost like it gives this feeling. It's mm-hmm. a feeling that you're like plotting, you know? How often are you plotting? Meaning you have a certain plot in mind, you know? <laughs> like, But it doesn't mean that. Like, that's one 
maybe possible way of seeing it, but I don't, I'm not talking about that. Like everything is like a game, like you're moving through life, you know? So what, where's your aim going to kind of sort of be? And those, those aims, those goals for lack of a better term are, are literally everything you do. Like you, otherwise, why, what are you even doing? Why would you even move a muscle? You know, if you don't have like an aim to do it or whatever, and that aim is going to be either long-term or short-term can be both can be both for sure. And that's like the, that's, it's rare, but that's really a good opportunity as you put it. But even if like you stand it, like you're sitting there, right? Not moving a muscle, right? We'll say, let's go extreme example. And you're like, okay, I got to move a muscle, right? Maybe because I'm getting stiff or whatever. There's always some like goal that you got to sort of achieve. And if you look at everything like that and you consider, okay, what, what's the ultimate outcome that I want, you know, and you could just keep that in mind, man, that is like a life, life changing thing when you can really understand that, I think. That and is a good one. Another thing that I, t- I told a story one, one time on this podcast and you mentioned it to me. I was talking about how when I was young, I was in a SEAL platoon and I was thinking I was all awesome. Yes. And all of a sudden, like other guys were getting promoted. Other guys were moving into better positions than me. And I, I, I kind of looked at myself and I said, if you're so smart, then why aren't you winning? And that was a big step for me to come to that realization. And, And what's good about it is that's another kind of early indicator of taking ownership because instead of me saying look I'm I'm smart and I'm not winning because everyone else is against me because this guy's that and this guy's an ass kisser and this guy you know all that could have done that instead I looked at myself and said wait a second if you're so smart and and luckily for me some of the guys around me were good guys they were my friends they I knew that they I couldn't blame anything on them yeah but if I was so smart why wasn't I winning yeah that's the other thing that oh that's the other that's the other hundred percent and you know you see it in people and like like a lot of these things just like extreme ownership like you can see it in other people super clear you know like this guy's talking a lot of trash for being a loser you know kind of thing you know like you know the old thing where it's like oh yeah i'm getting this guy's giving me relationship advice when he's like a single person you know he doesn't have a successful relationship or whatever you know it's Mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff it's super easy to see that in other people but for yourself, it's like, yeah, man, I have this cool idea that you probably got from someone else or whatever, and you have this cool idea, and you're so quick to be to tell people about it and to correct this person, you know, because it's so obvious they're doing it wrong, right? So you're gonna correct them, and boom, boom, and you have your arguments and debates all like formulated perfectly. You win any debate, but meanwhile, you're not doing anything, <laughs> you know, and like, you're just like sort of. It, so that is a big deal. Like, well, I realized that that's a huge deal. Like, it, and it's way better just to be quiet, man. You got and it, and it kind of like how you guys talk about it at the Monster you and Dave Burke. They'll, good deal, Dave. You'll talk about like t- uh, taking action, mm-hmm. right? So it's like t- the taking action part is like the hardest part of whatever, right? It's like the guy who goes to school so much, so much, and then he's like, but he can't really function in the real world because his whole focus on is on going to school. Yeah. Or the person watching like a bunch of motivational videos and, He's just all he's motivated to do is watch more motivational videos. You know, he doesn't take any action or whatever. Do you so get dopamine from a one motivational video? Do I? Do, 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 yeah. do people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what that's what makes him gonna wa- want to go watch another one. Watch more? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, they're like two things, you know, like two separate separate things. But nonetheless, it um, it kind of brings all that into perspective. You know, like you you. If you're not, or if you're so smart, why aren't you winning? So the why aren't you winning part, that's the most important part. You know, like, it's almost like, bro, who cares how smart that person is? You ever you ever hear someone hate on someone like, oh, they're just dumb or whatever. Like, uh, uh, who's the one? The, uh, the uh, Kim Kardashian, right? Mm-hmm. You know, people hate on her. They're like, I'm not even saying necessarily that I feel this way, but I'm saying this is what plays out a lot of the time. They'll hate on her. She's so dumb and they're so dumb or whatever. And then it's like, mm. all right, but if you're so not dumb, like why is she like winning, you know, and you're sort of <laughs> not, you know, kind of thing. It's like that whole idea is, very, is got put into perspective very much. So it's like, that's always on my mind too. Like before I open my mouth or whatever, it's like, bro, you, before you open your mouth, you should really work on a bunch of stuff first. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> So that's a, yeah, that's a big one. And it helps a lot too because you start to focus on doing rather than blabbing, you know, 
and black and i don't mean just black i mean in, i mean everywhere like on social media all these people having their strong opinions you know Bro, it's crazy i you know i i i see that happen right um you know like when i was on with joe rogan and tulsi gabbard um you know, obviously there was there she's a she's literally running for president of the United States of America. Okay, cool. And there's obviously we we touched on we didn't really like have a debate by any stretch. I mean, we we both we both kind of talked about things and we all kind of talked about things as human beings that were whatever. You know, it's it pretty straightforward, right? But the the conversations that took place on Twitter after that I mean, we're talking just, I, I, I was I was like, man, you, is this the best place for this random person to have this major <laughs> debate with yeah. some other random person oh, yeah. about whatever topic had come up that was either, you know, they, they didn't agree with or they agreed with. So that gets a little crazy sometimes. Oh, yeah. Huge. I, I, I hear people say you know that twitter is just uh the most horrible thing to participate in right and i I don't really think it's a horrible thing in fact i've gotten great interactions on twitter i've gotten incredible feedback i've met people i mean the whole reason that i was on with joe and tulsi was because of twitter but books I've linked up with people, we've had people on the podcast that I never would have heard of or never would have been introduced to that, that are American heroes mm-hmm. that have incredible stories that, that's all through Twitter. I've gotten great feedback, I've gotten adjustments, I've gotten correct, so that's all good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you're gonna go down the hole of like, hey, let's debate yeah. this hot, controversial topic. Yeah. You know, it's hard for me to, to, to reflect on that in a positive way. You know, it's like hard for me to look at someone and go, man, this is what you, you know, you just sent out nine tweets, like linked, you know, you can link tweets together. <laughs> sure. yeah. And someone will send out nine tweets yeah. about some topic. Yeah. And it just worries me because I think there's more productive things that people could do with their time, like if you if you want to put those things together in an organized way, and you want to make those statements, and and almost always they're attacking like in a super aggressive personal attack as well. Yeah. So, anyways, it's yeah. just interesting. Yeah, a lot of times it it says a lot. Like the words say what they say, but like the fact that those words are there like says a whole nother thing. You know, like you know the old nothing new. Where it's like, man you don't have anything better to do than to yeah. like express. And it's not like a lot any, by any logical means they'd come to the conclusion that, yeah, what I say is going to like solve whatever problem it yeah. is that I'm addressing or whatever. Like there's no reason to think that. Yeah. I, I, I guess I'm trying to think of a good metaphor for me. This is like a metaphor. If you saw someone that was having a, that was shouting at, at a toilet yeah. at the top of their lungs and and they walk out of that stall kind of like hell yeah you know kind of like yeah <laughs> and and I'm thinking man you just you just yelled because that's what that's yep. what it is right you're yelling at a toilet cuz whoever doesn't want to listen to you isn't going to even going to read the little things that you wrote yeah. so what's once again that's why it's more what's more important is like why not find some common ground with someone from a leadership, from just from a leadership perspective, right? From a leadership perspective, I wanna find common ground with someone. I wanna figure out what it is that they think, what their perspective is, so that I can understand their perspective, so that I can actually give them a logical argument, or at least show them what I believe to be valid points, so that they can then give me feedback on those points, and I can learn from them and either adjust my position or adjust their position. You can't yeah. get that done when you're yelling at a toilet, which is what a lot of people end up doing. <laughs> yeah, no, so, don't yell at toilets. Uh, but yeah, that and also that reminds me as well. Another is a little bit more of a detail than anything, but like how you how you do the, the whole 
at the Monsters, you, you call it being a tactical genius. Where mm-hmm. You just be quiet and let everyone else talk kind of thing. And this I, I find way more prevalent when I hear two people talk. Oh, when they're talking sure. or debating and there's little differences and differences. And then you can kind of, you know, like you're detached from it. Mm-hmm. right? But you actively detect because, man, before I was strongly compelled to like jump in. And like, correct you, you're wrong here, and let me correct you, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm smart, right? Mm-hmm. I gotta prove it to these people. I'm prove, I'm down, down for this whole thing. I'm smart, right? So I was so quick to like jump in and be like, yeah, you know, that's wrong or that's correct, and let me expand on that kind of thing, you know. And it's fun to do, you know. It's all, you know, you're having conversations, whatever. I dig it, but there's a bigger picture, you know. So if you don't say anything, you can see that bigger picture. Mm-hmm. You can be like, bro, you know how annoying you're being right now. Mm-hmm. Like you're, I think you're saying like truthful stuff or whatever, but you're be there's a bigger picture yep. with what you're doing. So your said, tactics might be good, your strategy is awful. Whack. It's way your off. Your long game is weak. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna win this argument, and yeah. you're gonna make this person dig in deeper that's yeah. what's going to happen not to mention like you less yeah after this like yeah. you think you're impressing them with the uh, and i'm thinking of like very specific conversations that i'm, that I'm remembering right now with, with, <laughs> whether it be friends or whatever friend family but you, you kind of think to yourself man like i i used to talk to my brother about this idea where it's like man what you're saying is correct in your little debate but about what you're doing is wrong you know you can't do that um or you can but you're gonna lose your war or whatever so yeah so one the, one of the things that i learned that's just with me right now it's with me hardcore is just don't say anything just be the tactical genius so <laughs> when they ask you or when they look at you or when you do for whatever like strategic reason yeah, want to chime in yeah you're like you're way more um in a position of the that you want to be in you know and you you don't run the risk of being all sucked in and alienating people and doing all the things that that you run the risk of doing when you're you know trying to impress them with how smart you are and how good your position is you know all right so let's get to your black belt yes sir uh you were surprised yes sir. we did a good job of keeping it under wraps yeah but had you at this point just surrendered the fact that you maybe we just were going to be a brown belt for a really long time? Yeah, and part of this, part of it was like I'm glad I thought of it, it this way, and part of it is like, man, I should, you know, you always think back on things like how oh, you should have handled things or whatever. So, cause, so moving up in ranks, and and I say this kind of in a way as advice to maybe people who can fall into these psychological traps with the belt, right? They want a belt. They want that stripe or the blue belt or the purple. You know, they want they want to get promoted, right? Because they want to wear, part of it is because they want to wear that belt. And it doesn't, keep in mind, it does not help. Jiu-Jitsu doesn't help. <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu culture does not get better. currently does not help uh, th- this particular situation where, you know, when um, in our school, we oh, don't I really thought you were saying, I thought you were saying it does not help. Like, oh, to think like, that way? No, no, no. I thought you were saying, hey, getting your black belt, by the way, it does not help your jujitsu, which I was like, <laughs> oh, that is true. true. Oh, I was yeah. like, that's a great oh, statement. Yeah, black that, belt does not make your jujitsu any better. Nope. It, so, it might even introduce the idea that it's not nearly as good as you thought it was. But <laughs> yes, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you about that too, by the way. But I'm saying the culture of jujitsu doesn't help your think, your mindset about this. Especially like our school doesn't do this a lot where you know how they line everyone line up at, yep. at the end or at yep. the beginning of class yep. and it's like, hey, by belt. Mm-hmm. You white belts, you go in the back. Go in the back. Go suckers, you know? Losers. Like almost like, yeah, man, subhuman, bro, whatever you guys Savages. Are. Oh yeah. And oh the ooh, the black belts, okay. not not even in the front row, yeah, yeah. in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah. Facing them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you guys bow down in front yes. of us kind of thing, right? And then okay, if you're a brown belt, you're almost here, so you can yeah. come close, right? Everyone else in the back. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like, I dig it, man. I dig it. Does, the jujitsu culture does not help. But if you can kind of get past that, um, it, this is how ideally I would have tried to think about it. Where you like, the, okay, so you, the belt doesn't matter. Okay. So when I, when I was coming up, I didn't know there was belts. Like I, I didn't really know. I watched UFC one, two, three, four, you know, those mm-hmm. ones. And sure, Hoist Gracie wearing a, a belt, but I joined No Gi with Dean, so we don't wear belts, therefore no belts. I don't know. I'm thinking back. I didn't think about this, but I, I'm, I'm thinking that that's probably my subconscious thought. So one day, Brent, remember Brent? Yeah. He was one of the trainers or whatever. He was like, you guys are about white belts here. And it was me and a group, and I was like, white belts? Mm. I was like, hmm, I never mm. thought of that, you know? Mm. So doing tournaments and competition and stuff like that, 
after it was a year, like 12, 13 months, right? Jimmy, remember Jimmy Sanchez, yeah. right? He was like, hey, uh, come to class tomorrow. And I was like, I was like, no, I can't come tomorrow. At, it was at 6 or whatever. I work. I work at night. Um, so I can't come. And he was like, no, 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 come tomorrow, come tomorrow. You have to come tomorrow. And I'm like, but I can't come tomorrow. I, I don't know how else to tell you. Like, I can't come tomorrow. I'm not training tomorrow. And he's like, no, 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 bro, we're having promotions tomorrow. So I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm not thinking belt promotions. I don't know about that yet. So he's like. <laughs> you still didn't still, realize? Nope, I had no idea. Right. And he and he goes, uh, he's like, no, we're having promotions. But I'm thinking, you know how like promotions like a, a tap out is coming in to promote their oh, brand. Oh, and yeah, yeah, It's yeah. like a show like and you can promotion. buy a promotion. That's what I'm thinking. So And everyone comes and it's a fun thing. Yeah. I thought it was like a team thing or something. And I'm like, that's cool. And I, man, if I didn't work, that'd be cool. And I would have come. And he's like, bro. He's like, what? I got it. I was like, you're getting, he goes, you're getting promoted tomorrow to Blue Belt. And I was like, huh, blue belt, because I never wore gi before, I was all mm. no gi, so it just <laughs> didn't dawn on me, so I was like, okay, and that was only after like 13 months or whatever, so I was just focused on training and learning cool new moves, and oh my gosh, I can do this now, and all that, you know, I'm getting better, and that's what I was focused on learning and stuff, then I got a blue belt, I was like, cool, but still no gi, I was competing, so it's like the belt never really, I'm just, I just want to win, I yep. just want to get better and win, because if I don't win, I lose tournaments, and that, that part sucks, doesn't matter what belt. Plus in Ogi, like I said, it's it's not belt driven. It's you know time. So, and then I got purple belt like another year, like super fast, and it was like a surprise. Like, it was like Elias was there, Joel Tudor was there. He was like, we're rolling, and I did a little bit of gi at this time, and I was we're doing gi, and then Elias just busts out a purple belt, and he's like giving it to me or whatever, and I was like, huh, like this is pretty kind of surprising and, and kind of crazy. But I started to do more gi, and then I um, I got hurt, like, at the end of Purple Belt, and, and, you know, people were starting to look at me like, hey, when are you going to get your brown belt? And it started getting introduced to me. So then my mindset kind of started to shift. Then I stopped competing, too. Mm -hmm. So now, like, just competing to win wasn't really part of it. It was, it was all about walking in the training room, or this crept into my, into my mind. So I walk in the training room, you know, I'm a Purple Belt. But I've been a purple belt for a while, so like I, I want to be a brown belt. Well, I'm better than that guy, you know. Like I tap that guy out. I should be. I should be wearing the brown belt, standing up front a little bit more. You know, it's that starts to creep in. Meanwhile, all the stuff that got got you there, you know, like focusing on like learning new moves, getting better at your moves, and and, and being effective or whatever. That is like sort of secondary. Mm. You know, you kind of focus like, oh, my instructor's here now. Let me um, I better not get caught. I better not experiment. I better like show them I'm, I'm good. You know, it's like that. And it jams you up. So, and then that's not to mention the frustration when it doesn't happen day after day, week after week. And don't let there be a promotion and you not get promoted. <sighs> harsh, man, harsh. Luckily, that never happened to me. But like, I've seen people like behave in ways that you should never behave in jiu-jitsu after that happens to them. Yeesh. You know, the kind of like a promotion goes on. Everyone yeah, well, gets yeah, yeah, promoted sure. and they don't. Yeah. Bro. So anyway, but I, so I can imagine the feeling, right? And then it, and it jammed me up. I felt like my learning just didn't, was like, I plateaued like pretty hardcore. What year is this? This is like end of purple belt. Which, what year is that? Uh, I got brown, my brown belt in 12, 2012. Okay. So there is that. Um, and then, you know, after you kind of get promoted, then everything starts to come into perspective. You know, like, man, I shouldn't have wasted my time thinking like that, all this stuff. But you're kind of easy now that you have the brown belt that you wanted the whole time mm -hmm. kind of thing, right? So you, you kind of let it go. And then, Especially because brown belt's kind of legit. Yeah. Like, I mean, brown belt is, le is legit. Like, yeah. you're a complete, um, you know. Yeah, you're you're yeah you're it's it's it, kind of it's a real thing. Yeah, it's like, I think you're seriously in the game. Yes, you have game. Yes, like you can technically be a purple belt and really maybe not have that great. I mean, look, there's purple belts out there that are murderers for sure. Yeah, but you can you can be a purple belt and be like, eh, yeah. you know, and of course there's cases where this is completely untrue, but usually a brown belt is legit, like yeah. ninety. I guess for every belt, it goes up like a percentage yeah. of what the, what the what the what the how legit, what the chances are that this person is totally is legit and yeah. has really good jujitsu. Yep. At brown belt, there's a really high probability that you're legit and you have really good jujitsu. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Where it's like for every because it it always feels that way when you're a white belt, 
and you get promoted to blue belt, um, you're like, man, that's like, that's legit. That's a big, huge deal. And then when you get promoted to purple belt, it's so much of a bigger deal that it's like, oh, my blue belt promotion was awesome, but like nothing compared to this purple belt. Mm. And then purple belt to brown is almost like you're becoming an adult kind of thing, <laughs> you know? So it's like way bigger. It's like cool purple belt, uh, yeah. but brown belt, you know? And then, of course, brown belt to black belt's even bigger, you know? Mm. Um, plus, there's like an added little thing to the black belt. But um, so, you know, it's easier to have clear thoughts on that. What and added little thing to the black belt? To being belt. a black belt? Yeah. Well, you get to stand up front and face yeah, the yeah, people yeah, now, yeah. you know? See what I'm so that's the thing? No, I, there's well, a lot I, more well, to One it. thing is when you're a black belt. Now, the percentage of people that are that ha- that don't really have good jujitsu that are black belts is very, very small. Yep. It's very, very small. Having a black belt in jujitsu means there's a 99% chance that you are good at jujitsu. Yeah. Because there's some people that, whatever, I don't even know where they got their belts from or whatever. Because yeah. what I don't want to do is just blanket say everyone that's a black belt is awesome because that's not true. Right, right, yeah. yeah but there's a really good, good chance that yeah. you've got some good jujitsu if you're a black belt. Yeah. Fully, and so anyway, the so the point, and then um, I ne- I never really ran into that at brown belt, even though I was a brown belt for a long time, like seven years. I was a brown belt. That was more because I had like career, and I let myself like not focus on jujitsu, you know, for a while. Then you know I got hurt again, yeah. like all this all this stuff. Um, you know who was always campaigning for you to get your black belt? Who? Greg Train. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good, my man. Yeah. Greg no, Train. he would, and he's you're. You're the guy that he'd be like, hey, bro, you know, hey, bro. <laughs> he'd be like, yeah. I was feeling good. And I go, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. the, that's the classic. That's where my joke came from yeah. is when do you think he should get his black belt? And I go, oh, probably another six, six months. months yeah. And then he probably asked me that five times, <laughs> you know, for <laughs> like, two years, for two years. years. Yeah, maybe even longer. He was yeah. like, hey, what do you think? I go, I'd be like, and then honestly, part of it was you'd get hurt. Yeah. You got, you got hurt at some really bad timing to get hurt. Yeah. Meaning, it was really close. Like, okay, yep. we, we, you know, it was like, okay, we're almost, in, I personally was almost in the planning stages of like, mm-hmm. okay, time to give him his black belt. Yeah. And I, I probably reached that planning phase. I might have reached that planning phase. I don't know. Have you been hurt three times? There bit, there, well, major injury was by at brown belt, bicep, my knee, I was out for a while. Uh, just probably my bicep and my knee, as far as her injuries go, yeah. Okay, so there's probably I can remember, two yeah. times in there mm-hmm. where it was, I was probably in the planning phase of, okay, we need to make this happen. Yeah. And when you get hurt, I'd be like, well, it's not happening now. Yeah, you know what's, what's I guess, could be frustrating, but I, I didn't feel it at the time when I was in it. That happened with Purple Belt as well. Because that day when I got hurt, mm-hmm. um, Elias told me, hey, you got it. I was really into no gi and no gi uh, competition. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to do the gi part of it. That was like an all-day competition. They had gi in the day and then no gi at night. And uh, Elias was like, hey, do the gi part of it. Mm. And I was like, no, no, that's not where my goals lie. And you know, like, no, giving the speech. He was like, gi. no, 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 you should really do the gi. It'll help your game, all this stuff. So like, I'd be like, cool, man, I respect you, and you're the man. But my goals don't lie. You know, giving him this sort of technical speech, and he's like, kind of like how Jimmy did, yeah. did me a long time ago. He's like, bro, do the gi. Because this gi competition is your brown belt test. Straight up told me because he went to do this. So I'm like, cool. Won. I won the purple belt. Got hurt in the no gi. Mm-hmm. No purple belt. No. Years and years and years yeah. go by. No purple belt. So same deal, man. Like right before. Wait, that was he told you brown belt or purple belt? I was a purple belt. That was the, the my, that gi competition. Yeah, yeah. How, so he didn't say if I won yeah, or yeah, not. Yeah, he yeah, just yeah. said that's your test for to get your brown belt. To get brown belt. Yeah. Yes. You just changed it to to uh, purple belt when you when you retold the story. So oh, yeah, got it. Yeah, so that was the test. Um, and yeah, passed the hurt. test. No promotion. Yeah, because I got hurt. So got same it. deal. But it's yeah, it's part of the the game. But in brown in brown belt, even though it was longer time. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking of it, and I had this thought before, you, the 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 introduction. I guess it wasn't an introduction, but the introduction of you taking a little bit more like control over what belt I had, like when we're um. I don't know when exactly that was, but there is a time where I'm th- where I'm thinking. In fact, someone even told me, maybe told someone who eventually told me that, like, oh yeah, they're gonna promote a brown belt, but Jocko's standing in the way. Like Jocko won't let it happen. <laughs> like the kind Dean was said, like okay, and Jocko was like, no, that's what th- someone told me. That so might I'm like, be a hmm. little bit of a. That might yeah. be a little bit of. Uh, 
I mean, the bottom line is we we have a pretty actually someone did tell me that exact thing, and I know who it is. So it doesn't matter. Pretty but. pretty democratic uh, promotional system here because we have so many black belts. Yeah. Everybody knows different sides of people's games. So generally, there'll be like a, "Hey, what do you think?" Right. I mean, for the lower belts, it's sort of you know the individual black belt instructor yeah. be like, "Hey, I promoted this guy, this guy." But when it comes to black belt. Yeah. There's going to be some consensus. Yeah. Like now counsel. I will say I am probably the biggest hurdle yeah. when it comes to black belt, right? Because yeah. it's a big deal. So I'm not over here throwing out black belts on people right. and going, "Yep, yep, good to go." So yeah, I mean, there were some times I don't, I, you know, whether I was the only guy standing in the way, and part of it is just the whole dynamics of the situation, which is. You know, someone throws it out there, not like, hey, I think, that, but someone being like, hey, you think Echo's ready? My standard answer is going to be like, no, six not months. ready. Probably yeah. probably like six months. Right. Probably pretty standard answer, yeah. whether that was you or whoever. Uh, so, yeah, there's probably some facts to me being the road roadblock. Yeah. But not because... Not because I was like, I don't want to give Echo his black belt. That wasn't it at all. It's yeah. like, I want Echo to be, to d- w- deserve Represent, yeah. his black belt. Yeah. Right? And that's what I always felt too. And, I, and well, you weren't put, ready. Yeah. Well, put simply, I, you had a specific standard that wasn't a, that was not a flimsy standard. That was like for the, the real deal. And I, so I figured that. And with varying levels and mixed emotions about that because <laughs> you know the immature side of me is like like man just just let it go bro you know like why you got to be so, just a hard ass all the time kind of attitude and then the other side is like man the it's almost like logical where man who would you rather be like a medium or n- not so good black belt or like the best brown belt like who would mm. you what would, as far as that kind of thinking goes and it's like man I'd rather be the good brown belt, really, you know, because you're rolling around with your butt. Like everyone knows the black belt is not that good, you know, and you don't want to be that guy. It's if you think if you're thinking For like sure. that, you know. So it's like, mm, you know, I I get it, I make sense. And then of course, if you can get to the maturity level to think, well, when it if it does happen, I'm gonna be so happy that it happened this way. If you can get there, then mm. it's like, okay, that'll make you feel better too. And that's again, if you're even focusing on that be- that belt situation. So when I even thought about it. And when I'd hear all this stuff that like, yeah, like these people want to like promote you, but then Jocko like doesn't, you know, kind of thing. Then I'd be, then that, when I think about it, it'd be like, I think to myself, yeah, I'd I'd basically have to tap Jocko out. Like not even once to like the guy, like I'd have to. I'd have to tap him out a few times for him to like consider giving. That's what I just figured. You just you know? kind of got to that place in yeah, your mind. Yeah. So that was it. And then so it's in a way it's easy to to get or it, it made it easier for me to not even focus on it anymore. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, did you tap out Jocko today? No. OK, then let's move on kind of thing in your own mind, you know. But let's say, let's say I did tap you out though. That would throw me right back into the downward spiral <laughs> focusing on belts. So that's the kind of the bad news I'm thinking like that. So eventually I came to the conclusion, this is probably like leading up, like the, the months or year maybe leading up to it, is like Jocko might give me a black belt when he's on his deathbed and we're done with this life and or he's done with this life. Hopefully I don't die before him and he'll be like, Oh, by the way, and give, you know, yeah. give, boom, I have a black belt. And I, I for real had that thought like he, whatever. And I was like, so okay, you I'm went okay from like, it. okay, he's holding up for a little while too. Okay. I got to tap him out before he's going to give it to me. Okay. So he's just, ne- I'm never going to get it. Never. Yeah. Uh, and keep in mind, I'm not thinking this every single day. I'm saying yeah. when I did think about that or when people would be like, hey, when are you getting your, bra- or your black belt or whatever, th- those are the thoughts that would go in my mind. You know, I, this was years ago. I had a conversation with James Nielsen about this because I forget who we were looking at promoting to black belt. But I was like, yeah, you know, maybe in like six months. And then they were like, you know, James was like, bro, he's good or she's good. Um, And I was like, yeah, I'd be like, and I. I think I said like, hey, that person's never even passed my guard before. Right. You know? It might have even been about you, but I don't think it was. I think it was an earlier black belt. I think it was maybe like Craig or someone in that group. And James is like, hey, we're much better than we were when we got our black belts. Right. Which is, so, you know, I got my black belt 
a long time ago, right? 2005. 2005. Right before I started. Right. So that's like, what, 14 years ago? So 14 years ago. I, I've had my black belt for 14 years. So how much better? I've done so much training. Yeah. I mean, I've done more training as a black belt than I did without a black belt, yeah. for sure, yeah. and high level training. Yeah. So you can't think, oh, I can't compare you. Because right. I don't, I mean, the same thing, right? If I held the standard of you of like, well, Echo's never tapped me out, so I'm never giving, I, I'm giving this black belt when he taps me out. That's an unfair standard yeah. because I'm, way better than I was 14 years ago when I got my black belt. So that's not a fair standard. Right. So yeah, that's that's it's, that's it's, not a good But it's way not to apples it. to apples though in that way because like there are certain people where it's like like Andy for example, he his skill rose so fast that oh, wait, wait, I mean, did he has he ever tapped you out before he got his black belt? I think he did. I think he got me I think he got me like one time, but I think it was like as a purple belt, oh, yeah. and it had no influence on a black belt. Oh, okay. Um, it just seemed like with Andy, and whether this was the case or not, it just seems like this could be a possibility in this type of equation where they rise so fast and they get so good so fast um, that it's like, bro, like I have no choice but to give this guy a black belt. Sure. He's straight up, he's tapping me out. Yeah. And I've been a black belt for 15 years. You know, it's it's kind of like that kind of yeah. kind of attitude. But yeah, so it's not like a, a, a apples to apples to a street in that yeah. way, I guess. But but it's true though. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So I, could, I couldn't be like, oh, well, well, I'm just gonna have to wait until Echo taps me out to get his black belt. Cause when is that gonna happen, right? Yeah. Could it happen today? Sure, it could happen today. But you might not tap me out for another two years, yeah. right? I mean, like that's that's the rea- reality of the situation. You might tap me out tonight, right? I make a mistake, you get a good move, it can happen. But it might take a long time. I mean, there's people that have never tapped me out and you know, it just happens. Right. Like there's, it doesn't mean that they're not worthy of, you know. Exactly, rank. doesn't, yeah. ma- doesn't me- mean that. So that's one of those things where I had to kind of recognize that, you know, we're better now than we were then. But to counter that argument, everyone's better now than we were then. Yeah. So probably a good purple belt right now would be able to beat me as a black belt 14 years ago. Hmm. Right? A modern yeah, purple possible. belt. Yeah. A modern purple. Like, do you watch the worlds? Did you, I mean, you watch yeah. the kids at the worlds. The, the, the purple belts at the worlds are savages. Yes, sir, right? When you compare them, especially to a, a black belt from 14 years ago. 14 yeah. years ago is a long time ago. Yeah. The game has evolved a lot. Yep. But, so you were not expecting it all when we were able to do that. You know, I, no. I so what I did was I ran it, ran it, because you were ready. And I was like, okay, you know, Echo's, Echo's good to go. He should be having his black belt. I will watch you roll. That's another thing I would evaluate, is how you roll with other people, not just with me. Because that's not fair either, right? right? Because how does your game match up with me? Not very well. Not the best way, you know? And I would watch you roll with someone that's good with me, and I'm like, you're doing better against that person. So then I got, you know, and it's the same thing with everyone. Like, you watch them roll, and you go, ah, you know, you should, you're killing this person, or you're killing that person. And even though you're not killing me, that person's giving me a hard time, so therefore it's just your game doesn't match well with with me, which doesn't mean that you're not, Ready yeah. just means it's a bad matchup. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's not linear like that for sure. So, uh, yeah, so it was awesome to have that go down. I know it was a a long haul. We're not into making stuff easy. No, sir, around you're here. Not. <laughs> so, okay, so what's the future hold for Echo Charles at this time? Oh man, for what for jujitsu? Uh, the same. I th- I feel like it's like so jujitsu. It, and thinking back on it, and I th- kind of had these feelings even co- kind of coming up for 14 years, where white belt, you're just like a, to- you're like a toddler, mm. kindergarten, you know, kind of, you know, and then you get through blue belt and purple belt, you're like, you know, elementary, interme- junior high, high school, mm-hmm. and then uh, brown belt is kind of like college, you know, you sort of feel like you're an adult, and yep. you're, you, you're in there, you can do some good things, you know, have an impact on the world in college, I'm talking about in college, Um 
and then but you're just learn it's you should be learning mm-hmm. in there and then um then you get black belt is like you graduated from college. Now you got to go function in the real world yeah, now, you know? So right. it's like, that's man, right. in a way people say, Oh, jujitsu just begins at black belt. And yeah, in that way it, it totally does. It does yeah. And that's not to mention all the little superficial things that kind of come good and bad, by the way, that come with it. Like, um, when you, when you're a black belt, take okay, So if you're not a black belt and you tap out a black belt, that's a, that's a good feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like one of those little things in your mind that you're like, I, I tapped out a black belt before you know kind of thing Mm -hmm. so now you have that kind of target on your back if you want to put it that way Um, you're going to give other people that good feeling yes you're a target for that so people you can tell people's attitude when they roll with you is a little bit different Uh, well it might be an illusion but i feel like it's different like physically and then um (laughs) that's not to mention like you know the stuff that maybe the other black belts might have like oh echoes black belt like i don't know if it's them expecting me to like i'm a black belt now so i'm gonna put it on you or what but every once in a while i feel a little something like oh you you seem like this role means a little bit more now than it does before it's like i get that feeling sometimes Um, not all the time but there's that um but yeah like how we were talking yesterday or whatever it's like it doesn't really change anything, you know, like just cause ooh, the, my belt ha- happens to be a different color. It's like, you're as good as you are. <laughs> that, you know? that doesn't make your jujitsu game no, any better. <laughs> no, sir. It does not. <laughs> but, uh, the future yet. Yeah, no, I just keep training, you know, I guess. I mean, there's in most ways, I feel like the pressure is sort of off and more so than it's off. It's more like, I don't, I'm not susceptible to that, that wacky way of thinking like, Oh, when am I going to get promoted? Oh, did I did did I perform well? So Dean and Jocko saw, you know, the pressure that I feel, which is a good pressure, is like you, when you're a black belt, man, you got to maintain. Yeah, you, you got to maintain. You got to train. You got to maintain. You don't want to be rolling. You don't want to put a black belt on and not represent and not have the skills, man. Hundred percent. So and now to look, me, you're that not. doesn't easier. mean you're going to win every time. Like yeah, there's yeah. people that are training more than you, and you're doing stuff, and it's like yeah, but. You should have black belt level skills. Yeah. Period. End of story. Yeah. Period. End of story. And I think that that makes it in, I guess it depends on what you mean, but I, I think that makes it easier for you. Like how you say it's good pressure. It's like, it's, it's not even, it's more of like a, it's like, it's like a cool little push, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's almost like, um, like, you know, these celebrities or whatever, like an actor or something, right. When he he has to play Wolverine. So he has to work out, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, you got to be Wolverine on this movie, so work out. He's like, okay, okay, of course, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of thing. Rather than, let's say you didn't have the movie, but you still got to f- work out. It's, you know, it's kind of different. So, yeah, like tra- training more and maintaining kind of the, you know, the standard or whatever, yeah. I feel like it's like easier. Uh, Akbar. Yes. You know Akbar. Well, yeah. For those of you that don't know Akbar, he's this awesome fighter and crazy jujitsu. Um, he was in, he was, you know, he fought. In the UFC, um, never really, you know, he never performed to the level of his capability. Unfortunately, you know, he, yeah. you know, he's just incredibly skilled, and he just didn't put it together right. Uh, you know, circumstances, things happened. You know, his opponents did things that were good. You know, it's like that's yeah. the way it is. But he did pretty good in the end. Like, he oh did, yeah, yeah, he, he did know, great. He, he did great. Had some good he, stuff. Oh yeah, he he's. But anyways, um, he's awesome to train with. But like, I always had a rule with him. We had a rule with each other. Mm-hmm. If it's you want, if you want to train, we're gonna train. Like so, there's no <laughs> because both of us kind of know it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, a crushing role. It's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be gnarly, and I, you know we had the we had the rule at first. It was an unwritten rule, and then one day I just said it. I was like, hey, no matter what, you want to roll, we're rolling. <laughs> and and he's like, hey, if you want to roll, we're rolling. Yeah. So he but he t- he just. He just like came, started training again. Yeah, yeah. Training with me there. He's so savage. Yeah. Freaking hard worker. Hey, when he rolls, he rolls. Oh, yeah. He's for going sure. for it, bro. Yep. He's going to bring it. Yep. Yeah. He's going to bring it. And uh, videos? You're going to start making some more videos? Yeah. You know, video's hard because, like, especially now that videos are, I don't even know if I told you this fully, but. Like videos are so common now. Yeah. That like back when I made the victory videos, it was like Yeah. Try watching. You those. were, you were like ahead of your time. Way actually. ahead. That's the thing. And looking yeah. at them now, you're like, oh, oh that's part kind of cheesy, kind of funny, not fun. They're like cool, but it's like you, hmm. need to, you, you should post those on the uh Jocko podcast channel so people can watch them. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, but watching those videos now, like those videos would not make a mark right now. No, and no, not no, to just say be another one because yeah. they're good or not good or nothing like that. I'm just saying like videos are, are, they're just so much everywhere. So it starts to become like a wash of just many, many millions of videos. So granted, sure. Like there's you and, and you know, our, all our people, they, they, they watch our videos regardless of, of what they are, whatever. No, I mean, not regardless, but, um, like, we do have an advantage as far as eyeballs, as far as videos, or people caring about the videos. Okay. To me, the the ocean of videos, like it's hard to get people to care about videos. So you kind of got to be selective, I think. So if I put like a bunch of videos out, mm. I don't want people to, our people, <laughs> to be like, oh, cool, and sort of get bored with them, you know. Mm. So it's like you want to leave a mark. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it caused me to be a little bit apprehensive with like just f- flooding, you know. The, the place with videos. The cool thing is, there's people making all kinds of videos, anyways, with us in them. Yeah. So, yeah. They're out there. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I don't know. It's weird. It's But keep in mind, too, though, I'm like the opposite of you in this way where I'm like like way more like hesitant like I'm most worried about that you know probably to the point where I shouldn't be worried about that quite yet. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll, yeah, we'll make some videos about that. Cool. Right on. Def core. Def core did Awesome. Anything else, man? That's it. Thank you. Thank you for giving us your history. Yeah, man. It's Thanks actually for shedding light. Seems like a good place to wrap it up. People have been asking for a while mm-hmm. for some more Echo Charles. They got it. Cool. They get, kind of get it on the Grounded podcast, too. The other podcast that we have. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. It's, um, yeah. You, uh, yeah, it's a little bit more represent. And then again, I don't know, sometimes in the support part. It, it's kind oh, of, of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like true. representative of kind of back, like you know. Okay, if we're done training or something, right? And well, I don't know, me or Greg or somebody brings something something up, like some subject, some topic, some question for you or each other, whatever. And you start talking about it, and then I start talking about it. Then you're talking trash to me, like you're you know, like all just that whole thing or whatever. Um, it's a little more casual conversation. Yeah, the grounded kind of is more skewed, yeah. like in that regard. Well, check. Well, speaking of conversations, I'm going to be having some live conversations with people. Now, you're going to come to some of the shows. I'm not sure what, which ones, but we're even though, um, as people have pointed out, I told everyone that, you know, Echelon Front is not a rock band and we're not going on tour. Yeah. Well, I am going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Echelon Front. It's just me. Yeah, and I am going sure. to multiple cities. Yeah. So yeah. I guess that does make it a tour, live gigs. January 6th in DC. January 11th in Austin, which was the first one that sold out. January 16th in New York. January 20th in LA. January 27th in Seattle. And January 28th in SF. So at those gigs, if you're wondering what I am going to do, I am going to talk. I'm going to dive into some subjects. I am going to do some Q&A from the crowd live, which is enjoyable for me. And I'm just going to go deep on some subjects. Um, the only I've only done one live event from that, that would be closest, and that was the live podcast that we did in New York City, mm-hmm. number 160. And... This isn't going to be a podcast, and the, I'm not going to. Well, we might turn these into podcasts. We might take a compilation of some of the questions, or take a compilation of some of the things that I cover, and make them into a podcast. But not all of it will be in a podcast. And I'm don't. The reason that I didn't want to do a podcast is I don't want to put any framework around this. I want to be able to really just go and get after it with no. Um, no framework yeah. and just be able to get after it hard and i i know that's i have no real other way of saying it that's what i want to do is i want to go hard on these on these events and with no framework and and make it happen so that's what i'm doing go to jockolive.com if you want to come to those and echo for so so you've been talking today about kind of some of the things that you've done to improve your life get yourself We'll say on a tighter, a tighter 
sort of spans of the path. Sure. And there's good ways to do this in life. Yes, there is. And not to mention, you can do that while you're supporting this podcast. Yeah. If you want to. It's true. You can support yourself for sure. We are highly recommend it. Yes. You can support the podcast too if you want to. If you like. Yeah. Up to you. Oh, good. Because this podcast doesn't start off with 12 minutes of advertisements. <laughs> no, it does <laughs> not. And we're not beholden to our sponsors. <laughs> Why are you going to say it like that? Well, because. That's just how we're, I dig it. Because we're not, we don't, we don't actually have sponsors. Jim. And you can press stop right now because you know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> we're talking about staying on the path, representing while we're on the path, yeah. tips and I don't want to say tricks because there's no trick. Yeah. No trick. We'll say guidelines to maybe help you along the way. Mm-hmm. Help everyone along the way. Check. Help you, your husband or wife, kids, everything. The whole gig. I like it. First thing you can do, jujitsu. Talked about it a little bit today. A little bit. A life-changing activity, by the way. You ever think about who you'd be without if you didn't do jujitsu? I would. I've told you this. I've told everyone this because I've done, been <laughs> on this podcast. And I, the thread that connected things for me was jujitsu. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is you did jujitsu. You didn't have the other pieces. Jujitsu you had, you didn't have the other pieces. Mm-hmm. But jujitsu allowed, once you saw the other pieces, it's like, oh, there's the thread. There's how these things connect. Yeah. For me, I had the other pieces, no jujitsu, no connection. Gotcha. Got jujitsu, got yeah. connection. You were the opposite. Had jujitsu, no other pieces. Oh, yeah. cool. Got, got the other pieces. Now I see yeah, the connection. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, so we want to do jujitsu. We do. Without jujitsu, Jocko ceases to exist. Ceases to exist. As we know it. Do you know that in a SEAL platoon, there is a pecking order? I, that makes sense to That me, yeah. pecking order, straight up, it's based on like, hey, who's going to win in a fight? That's the way it is. It makes man. sense. That's the way yeah. it is. Yeah. And, and you know what? That is not only in a SEAL platoon. There's just like that underlying current. Yeah. So what's nice is if you know jujitsu, you can move up in that pecking order a little bit. That is true. <laughs> that is true. That's interesting how you put the, that into words that way. Uh, I, man, I agree with that. That's true. And it, it applies to a lot of situations that in a way I almost don't even want to say them, but we kind of already know, you know, that it, that pecking order, structure, hierarchy, whatever, that, let's just say it exists, all right? And yes, jujitsu helps you in that. I'm not saying that's the main benefit. What's cool about a SEAL platoon, the reason I can start by saying a SEAL platoon, is because in a SEAL platoon, that pecking order is not always theoretical. Mm -hmm. So there's times you get some van fights, right? That's gonna happen. Right, right. There's gonna be a van brawl. And and all of a sudden, the pecking order is revealed. Yeah, yeah. And so you feel it, but then when you get to see it, you go, yeah, I was right. There's a little, little, little pecking order here. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with your rank. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, here's what it is. <laughs> and so when you see it, when you see it in the, uh, in the undercurrent, in the under, beneath the surface, when you kind of think it's there in a SEAL platoon, and then it gets revealed, and you're like, oh, yeah, it was there. Yeah. Then you see it everywhere. And you go, oh, yeah, it's over there, too. Oh, yeah, it's over there, too. Yeah, you can yeah. just see it. Yep. And it's a real thing. True. So why not elevate yourself? Elevate yourself, yeah. On that little hierarchy, a little bit with some jujitsu. Doesn't mean you're running around choking people out. Nope. But you can. You can if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. So when you're doing jujitsu, you need a gi. Get an origin gi. This is the thing. People are gonna hear that right there. They will replay that and say, you know, someone's gonna go, oh yeah, I see what this is. This is like a macho bully thing, right? It's like, yeah. hey, yeah. I'm sorry to break the news to you. This is a reality. Yeah. This, this is a reality. Yeah, and that, that's a good point. Where like, yeah, I, I think that. When you think about it, yeah, I think that someone could come to, could get, I don't want to say triggered. I'm not going to use the word triggered, mm. but someone could just get <laughs> moved into thinking that. Yeah. But it's, it, whether that's the case or not, it's like you can say that about anything. You know, this like, is the thing. I'm not sitting here saying, it, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, well, this is what it should be like, or this is what, this is, uh, this is how things have turned out or this is good or this is bad. I'm not saying any of those things. Right. I'm just telling you what it is. Yeah. F- factually. Factually. This is just what it is. Well, factually that applies to everything. 
in life. Like, okay, you know, you it's yeah, a, and hey, like, check this out. Just by the way, you can be the best fighter in a SEAL platoon and everyone can hate you. Like oh, you could, yeah, that doesn't yeah, mean you're a good operator, doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying it's there. And it's it's one of the many little it's one of the many things that are being judged. Yes, one of the many It's one of the many sir. things that are being judged. It's one of the many games that are being played. It's one of the many little hierarchies that are existing. Yeah. So why not elevate yourself in that game? Yes, That's sir. my question. The reason that, the reason to, to not elevate, there are no good reasons to not elevate. Yeah. Because when you elevate yourself in that game, it actually will elevate you in other games in your life. Yeah. So train jujitsu, people. Yeah. This isn't, by the way, this isn't 1995 when I started jujitsu, and you had to, you were lucky if there was a jujitsu school somewhere around you. This is America in 2020, 20. and there are jujitsu schools everywhere. Or you can go online and you can go to YouTube for free and watch jujitsu and get some of your friends to roll around on a carpet, mm. and you can learn some jujitsu. Learn sure. some jujitsu. Get yourself an orange and gi. Yep. Because you're going to need one for jiu jitsu. Yep. Yeah, it was funny because, you know, I don't d- train gi as much, right? So it's been a while um, when we're uh, p- involved in the promotion of Andy Burke mm-hmm. well, to get his first degree. First degree. Degree on his black belt. On the black belt. The black belt. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I put back on the, the rift. Mm. Gee, let's face it. When I let's grabbed it, I came out with my rift on and I said, this is the nicest <laughs> thing. Ever. When you put it on, it's a completely different scenario that's just going on. It's so good. I kind of felt, and I'm I'm admitting this to you and whoever's listening because we're, we're real close like that. And I trust you guys a lot, but I'm going to admit this. I felt a little bit like elevated, like kind of better than ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just a small, in a small way yeah. because of that. I mean, yeah, it's, you, it's you, really what, good. you know what you have to do? Pete, the the folks that made this gi, you have to give, like legitimately say, yes, you elevated the game. This is a game changer. This is not normal. Yeah. This isn't like... This isn't like, hey, we took a sports car and we put racing stripes on it. Yeah, yeah. This isn't like, hey, we took a sports car and we put rims on it. Yeah. This is, you're driving a sports car, I'm flying by you in a Raptor, <laughs> <laughs> in an F-22 Raptor. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, very, very good. So yeah, yeah get them, originmain.com, that's where you get them. That's where you get them. Multitude of options, yep. by the way, including rash guards when you do no gi, which I think is important. They're I both prefer, important. Right now, I'm preferring no gi. Well, then again, I don't know. See, After last just, night, you, like I kind of want man. gi now. I, I saw you. S- Wait, did you sweep Greg train? Yes. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw that little sweep. I was like, oh, because Greg train's hard to sweep. Yes, he got is. that wrestling background. Yeah, but you tied up that hand a little bit. <laughs> over he went. The gi, yeah. Ooh, so with you know that gi. You go in phases, right? Yeah. Gi, no gi. But yeah, so if you're doing no gi, boom, rash guards as well. All available. Orjamain.com. They also have jeans. Speaking of elevating the game, yes, sir. I'm going to tell you right now, get some Origin jeans, and I will say this, the lightweight jeans, which are called Delta 68, mm-hmm. those are possibly the best leg coverings that exist. And I have to call them leg coverings because you can include all kinds of things, right? We could be sure. a kilt that covers your legs, <laughs> right? We sure, could be a wetsuit bottom that could cover your legs. Uh-huh. You know, we could be over, there's all kinds of things that can cover your legs. So I'm, I'm putting all leg covering, all leg covering in the world. Just straight and up. I'm saying Delta 68 origin jeans are the best things you can cover your legs with the world has ever known. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's bold. I know. Because technically, and not to go too deep into it, but whatever. So technically, you know, when you talk about wetsuit bottoms, mm-hmm. kilts, all these other things, those are like circumstantial, like, you know, there's for certain scenarios, mm-hmm. right? Like, especially when you talk about wetsuits or spats or something like this. Right? Mm-hmm. So you're saying at the end of the day, net, net, as they say, I don't, I don't really like the expression net, net, but whatever, net, net, meaning... Under the circumstances that you wear a wetsuit bottom versus jeans under the circumstances you'd ever wear jeans or the like. Mm-hmm. Jeans, best, 100%, across the board. What I just said is what I meant. <laughs> said what I said. Overall, yeah. in the world, which this is 2020, and I'm saying of everything that's been invented to put on your legs, yeah. this is the best thing that's been invented. 
Delta 68. Now, the, the heavyweight jeans, awesome too. Okay. And they're co- running that close second. Okay. But my legs don't get cold. <laughs> Cool. So I don't need that little extra. Plus, I live in Southern California. Yeah, but that's true, Jocko. But Delta sixty eight. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. But heavyweight. The the re- they're not heavyweight. They're just normal jeans. Normal jeans. They're normal jeans, and they're awesome too. Mm-hmm. But they're in second place. Yeah, man. So I don't. But you know, for Pete, they're in first place. What the heavyweight? Heavy yeah. Right. Well, he's up in Maine. So yeah, he's that's... up in Maine. He gets that little bit. If he was in Southern California, he might have a different opinion. Yeah. Maybe. I'm gonna. I'll be. It doesn't matter to me because my legs don't get cold. So that's not a factor. So there you go. There you go. We also Jeez. have supplements there, by the way, if you knew that. Oh, wait. All this stuff is made in America. Did I mention that? The It's like the little tiniest little tagline made in America. Actually, the huge factor. Huge. Yeah. All the Rebuilding ma- the America. The materials are made in America. That's how made in America this made in America stuff is. Oh, wait. We're going to bring stuff in from other countries? No, 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 no. We're going to grow it here. American hands. Yep. American hands, American economy. Everything made in America. So, yeah. Also, yeah, joggers, you know, sweat stuff, good stuff. Supplements, though, yes. Like I said, important supplements, joint supplements. Right. You can have all the creatine, uh, uh, mega mass, whatever in the world if your joints aren't working. Right. You, you're just spinning your wheels. You're not even spinning your wheels. Your wheels are locked up. Your wheels are locked up like your elbow or like your shoulder. Yeah. No, don't allow that to happen. Get on the joint warfare, krill oil. Get yourself some discipline. Go. Multiple choices. You got a you got a pill, right? A little go pill. Mm-hmm. You need that little. You're going into a meeting. You're getting ready to roll jujitsu. Whatever. You're doing something that needs a little extra cognitive boost. Mm-hmm. Boom. Take one of those hitters. Yep. <laughs> Get the go in a can. Yep. Why? Because it's. 2.44 in the afternoon, you're been up early, it was leg day, you were up late, you're feeling a little bit of a drag. Cool, mm-hmm. crack that open, and you're on fire, ready to destroy the world. <laughs> Dig it. Also, milk, protein, additional protein, in the form of a lovely dessert. <laughs> I said it. But yeah, good, there's some chocolate, chocolate, peanut butter, I think is that heavily in the rotation right now? Heavily in the rotation. Um, Somebody told me to mix strawberry and peanut butter. Have you done that? Was that you that told me to do that? I have not done strawberry that and peanut, just butter, like that peanut butter. Is that peanut, peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Yeah. I'm going to try it at some point. No. Well, I think what I did was I had chocolate with, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. If I did, that was a long time ago, mm-hmm. and my mind's not even on that right now. I remember mixing a banana with the strawberry, and that was something. Yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah. Either way, it's all good. And, you know, some people, they prefer just the vanilla. My so middle daughter is, fine. is in college right now. And she she sends me little videos or pictures. <laughs> sure. And she's, and what, what I, you know, she sends me one that says, literally a strawberry milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So anyways, that's my daughter. Yeah. And that's And milk. she's she's in college studying nutrition. So okay. what she's studying. Yeah, yeah. STEM. So the world makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, STEM. Yeah. Science. Yeah, that's tech, right. Tech. Science. And, you know, that thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, man. Cool. She's in there. Yeah. Studying that nutrition. So she's giving me feedback. It's good. She, and, and you know what feedback she gives me? She's like surprised right. that the ingredients are good. Oh, okay. It's okay. like, oh, you really did good, though. And I'm like, <laughs> all telling you, yeah, yeah. yeah as yeah. if I like, didn't make it. Yeah, yeah. No. You know, she's surprised. <laughs> yeah. That's what your kids, your yep. kids think you're an idiot. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, thank you, darling. Hey, it's all very good. nice of you. Also, Jocko White tea. If you like deadlifting, or if you don't like deadlifting, you probably don't like deadlifting because you de- can't deadlift that much. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you can deadlift eight thousand pounds, you like it more. Oh yeah, big time. Take it from me. But yeah, certified organic too, by the way. So yeah, get that. All that orgymain.com. Also. Jocko is a store. It's called Jocko Store. You can get Jocko White Tea at this store too, mm. by the way. But, or should I say, and the shirts, if you want to represent Discipline Equals Freedom, good. Good is a good one. That mm. one has late, like, that, one, that one's one that won't ever go away. You need that concept, good, mm. for the rest of your life. Some people have gotten tattoos that just say good. And I understand. 100% understand. I dig it. It was a good move. It was a good move. We also have hats. Truckers hats, 
Beanies. Beanies. Hoodies. Good stuff there. Yeah, very so. good. So, yeah, if you want to represent while you're on the path, jockostore.com. Also, subscribe if you haven't already on Stitcher and iTunes, Google Play. You know, is it important to subscribe? Hey, you know what? I'm, you be the judge, whatever you like. But I think it's conducive to remaining on the path. I think so. Just subscribe. Boom. Click subscribe. Boom. You're in the yeah, game. That's a good question. Is it a good idea? to? Is it important to subscribe? Subscribe to the podcast so you know that it's out. Yeah. Don't forget that we also have the Grounded podcast. And we also have the Warrior Kid podcast, which there's four new episodes right before Christmas were uploaded. So check out the Warrior Kid podcast, and you can also get some Warrior Kid soap from young Aiden, who's making soap on his farm so that you can stay clean. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's good soap too, which I haven't mentioned in a while. It's not this decorative table piece. No, it's functional. It's actual for real soap mm -hmm. that you use, you know. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I wash my boy with it. He's pretty three. good branding. <laughs> <laughs> From Aiden, right? We're not mad at like, the branding. Like, like he wraps them in these little burlap things. Oh yeah, it's like all it's, it's legit. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, this came from a farm. This a kid made this, a kid that's super squared away. Yeah. It looks kind of rusty. You know how many you know you know how many like well, that's the reason I said branding in a funny way is because people talk about, hey, we need to work on our branding. Yeah. You know what his branding is? Doing his job. Yeah, yeah. Making the stuff that works and functionally is able, or he's able to produce. Yeah. That's what it is. And he gets it to you. Boom. Yeah. One shows up. Boom. Good job. Aiden. Keep it up. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is true. Yeah, I, I use that. That's heavy in the rotation too. Both kinds, Jocko and Trooper. So what's the new, the one that is coming out or the antibacterial? Yeah, there's one that's coming out. Uh, antibacterial, antimacrobial, microbial. Microbial, hell yeah. Microbial? Yeah, microbial. Uh, it's anti that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and it's got a really good uh, name. Did I tell you the name? You did. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I'm drawing a blank. Hit me with it again. Killer soap. <laughs> Hell yeah, killer soap. You know? Wait, killer, that's it? Killer, killer soap. Killer soap, all right. Yeah, yeah. Book it, yeah. Sign We're me killing up. microbes. Yeah. We're bacteria. killing fungus. Yep, good idea. We're at least making a hard environment for them to survive in. Yeah, yeah, make it difficult. Because killing it is would take like uh, chemicals that I'm not sure young Aiden could put into a soap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not down with that. We're putting this on our skin, so yes, makes yes. sense. Also, YouTube, we do have a YouTube channel, official. It's a good one. Video version. Some excerpts on there, varying uh, lengths. We'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some enhanced excerpts every once in a while, too. It's good. It's cool, YouTube, if you want to, you know, if that's how you listen to the podcast, or should I say watch it, we do have a YouTube channel. So, yeah. I would say subscribe now, but, man, YouTube, actually, yeah, you want to subscribe. That seems like a good place to subscribe because then you yeah. have it in your, what it does, then, then YouTube's kind of telling you, A, when a new podcast comes out or a new video comes out. Right. And B, it kind of involves that whole algorithm. Yeah, so it's yeah. showing you like, oh, this video, here, you'll like this one. Right, right. Which yeah. seems smart. Yeah. Because if you like the podcast, maybe you like some other thing that they figured out that other people are listening to. Right. Yeah, not to mention ease of access as well. If you're like, hey, let me, you know, if you want to revisit mm -hmm. one or someone told you about like a video excerpt, it's like easy. You can kind of click on your little subscriptions or whatever rather than going through YouTube. Search. Let me see. Is that the one? Is that the one? You know what I'm saying? Some, yeah. Just subscribe to YouTube. Like but that. if you really want to be in the game and get alerted, I, there's that bell thing you mm -hmm. can click on. Click on the little bell. Get alerted every time. Boom. You really want to be alerted. Do that, man. Psychological warfare, another, another opportunity to stay on the path. Because when you sometimes you're gonna slip off the path a little bit. You're gonna think about slipping off the path. You're gonna think that those donuts are looking good. No, press play on your MP3 phone player, player, whichever, whichever, and listen to me telling you why you do not want that donut, why you want to go to the gym, why you want to get up in the morning. Why you want to complete that product. Just a bunch of things that you can let slide. Don't let it happen. Get psychological warfare for yourself. And if you need a, a visual representation, check out flipsidecanvas.com for art. There you go. Yep. To hang on your wall. 
run by my brother Dakota Meyer. Also have some books, Leadership Strategy and Tactics. It's coming out January 14th. So if you haven't ordered it, you best order it now. Otherwise, you're going to be stained for life. Stigmatized with a second a dish. And I'll meet you and I'll thank you. But deep inside, we'll both know. Not just me. If it was just me, don't worry about it, right? But you're going to feel it too. You're going to know that you got yourself that second edition. You're going to know that when you should have ordered, you hesitated at the moment of truth. Don't do it. (laughs) Way the Warrior Kid series. There's three of them. One, two, and three. Just awesome feedback from around the world on those books. So if you know a kid, you're around kids, you have kids, Get your kids, get those kids, get these kids, get all kids this book. Donate it to your library. I wish I had this kiss. I I wish I could gift this book to every kid in the world right now. I need your help. Make it happen. This this, This book is just... Look, it's not even my, it's not even my book. It's just everything I've learned from people throughout my whole life captured into this book. So kids need it. Mikey and the Dragons, for the littler kids that are, are, let's face it, when you're a kid, you're scared. The world is an imposing place. You need to learn how to overcome those fears. Mikey and the Dragons will teach you, teach your kids how to do that, but basically might teach you how to do it too. Pay attention. The field manual, Discipline Freedom Field Manual, it's a new year. This is the book you want to get someone for the new year. January. They already fell off their new uh, re- their new year's resolution. Get them the field manual. Discipline equals freedom field manual. Get some audio for yourself on iTunes, Amazon Music, Google Play, other MP3 platforms. Get it there. And then, of course, Extreme Ownership and the Dichotomy of Leadership that I wrote with my brother Leif Babin, where you will learn the fundamental principles of leadership. And then we also have Echelon Front, which is our leadership consulting company where we solve problems through leadership. If you want me or someone from the Echelon Front team to come and talk to your company, to come and work with your company, go to echelonfront.com. We also have EF Online, which is, look, leadership is a really complex there is thing. And yet it's simple. So how do you get information to people? Look, some people can read. I get it. Some people can grasp information from reading, but not everyone does. Sure, you can get everyone on your team. Get them extreme ownership. Get them the leadership strategy and tactics. Get them the dichotomy of leadership. That's awesome. Some people aren't going to absorb it that way. And even if they do absorb it that way, they need repetition. They need to see it again from a different angle. They need to actually practice it. Go to EFonline.com where you get repetition, you get to see different angles, and you get to practice leadership situations. Interactive. EFonline.com. If you want to come to a leadership event with us, go to ExtremeOwnership.com. This is a leadership event we do. We are doing it in 2020. We're doing it in Orlando, we're doing it in Dallas, and we're doing it in Phoenix. So if you want to come, keep checking ExtremeOwnership.com for details there. All of these events have sold out, and these are going to sell out too, so get in on it early. And last, we have EF Overwatch and EF Legion where we are taking, we are taking leaders from every level of the military and placing them into civilian companies so that they can use those leadership skills that they have. They can, they can learn the industry specifics when they show up. That's no factor. Military people are trainable, but these are folks that understand the principles of extreme ownership and the dichotomy of leadership and the laws of combat, and they will help you and your company. Go to efoverwatch.com or eflegion.com. And then if you still want to hear more from Echo Charles and me, well, we are available on the interwebs, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on 
la fassa che borrasch. Echo is at Echo Charles, and I am at Jocko Willinkin. Once again, thank you to Echo Charles for pressing record. But more important, thank you for being humble and for having my back and supporting this podcast. You do everything for the podcast except for the little part that I do. So everything on the backside is awesome. And I appreciate you covering all that so I can do my little piece up front. And on top of that, the podcast would not be possible without everyone that is listening, supporting it. So everyone that's listening and spreading the words, spreading the word about the podcast and telling your friends to listen and getting a Def Core t-shirt or an Origin Gi or a pair of Delta 68 jeans, it's all of you that make this podcast possible. So thank you for your support. And of course, this podcast is also possible because of the sacred freedom that we enjoy, which is provided by the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marine who sacrifice their freedom and sometimes their lives for our freedom and our lives. So thanks to all of you and to our police and law enforcement and firefighters and paramedics and EMTs and dispatchers and correctional officers and border patrol and secret service and all first responders. We are also here and able to do this podcast because of what you do. So thanks to all of you for your service and to everyone else out there. Just remember that it is a hard path in jujitsu and in life and there are ups and downs and you will get injured and you will get beat down and you will get tested and those hard days will go on and on and on but if you impose discipline in your life if you play the long game and think strategic and if you stay on the path and keep moving forward you will end up achieving what you want to achieve that will happen so put on that gi step on to the mats of justice in jujitsu and in life and keep getting after it and until next time this is echo charles and jocko out